Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Cornelius and you're watching the Global Poker League Summer Series live from Las Vegas. Yesterday we saw Scott Ball of the Las Vegas Moneymakers take that match down and take six points versus Chris Mormon of the London Royals. Today we have another great lineup for you. It's Randy Nananoko Lu of the Hong Kong Stars and he will be up against Martin Jakobsen of the Montreal Nationals. The Global Poker League Summer Series starts now. Hello, my babies, and welcome to the Global Poker League Summer Series. I am Uncle Daddy Joe Stapleton. That is Eric Danis, and we are closing in on the end of our first heat here on the Summer Series at the GPL. Big matchup for you guys today. We've got Randy Nanonoko Lu, or as I like to call him, Nano Yesco, and Martin Jacobson, World Series of Poker main event winner. They are going head-to-head -head today, the Hong Kong Stars versus the Montreal Nationals. Eric, as a guy from uh, Quebec, oh. Quebec, Ottawa, Canada, Ontario, but close enough. Very you close speak to French. You're, you're, I am a French Canadian. You yes. are one of those people that can speak both languages. You are a French Canadian. Do you have a dog in this fight? Do you have slight partiality towards well, Montreal? That's a tough one. Maybe, maybe uh, deep down in the heart. But I'm such an Ananoko fan that this is really a tough one for Ooh. me. So you know, 50-50. But of course, Jakobsen I thought was a fantastic pick uh, by the Montreal Nationals. I think the, the, it fit in very well with the team. Uh, him being non-Canadian and not from the province of Quebec was not an issue whatsoever when it comes to Jakobsen. There are Get some, out! There are politics involved in uh, in uh, owning a uh, or running a team, uh, even if it's poker in the uh, in Montreal in Quebec. So not surprised that uh, some of the picks might have uh, heard grumbles with some of the picks. But Jakobsen is a pick that. Uh, went uh, very well with the French Canadian community in Montreal. Well, let's see how everyone did with their picks overall as we take a look at the team standings. So far, we've got the Americas coming up. 
Yeah, and as we can see, the mighty Montreal Nationals, maybe that's why I have a soft spot in my heart. I like a winner, Joe. Oh, yeah. They are winning. They are doing really well. They just stand to become the first team to win 11 games or 11 matches, sorry, in this league uh, later on today if Jakobsen can pull off a victory. 106 points. LA has joined them in the 100 uh, century uh, club with now 101 points. They got those from Aaron Paul, six points from Aaron Paul on Monday. The Rounders, the Mets are the last team in a playoff spot right now. Uh, we talked about the rush and the moneymakers needing points yesterday the moneymakers got points six points in fact by scott ball six very important points they're now only yeah, 11 ball. points out of a playoff spot we might get a scott ball appearance on this set very shortly as well i hope you don't mean might and i hope you mean definitely because he's due on set in about a minute let's take a look at the eurasian standings there we go, the London Royals, the mighty Royals still sitting in first place. The Wolverines lost an opportunity to score more points, only three points from Urbanovich earlier this week. Here, here we see the Hong Kong Stars with a uh, sweep here. Nananoko's team could join London in first place overall, uh, sorry, in the conference. Uh, I think that's the team, Joe, that really has created a lot of buzz. Most people not giving this team a chance. Selena Lin deciding to go very local with her squad. Maybe Nananoko the only exception. But she's really made some shrewd, wise choices. Players that really want to play, really want to score some points. And Nananoko is not the exception here. He's had a wonderful start to the year. I like how we call it local, as if like Asia is a small right. place. The biggest right? local, it's like, yeah, it's that's massive right, that's right. It's a portion big, yes. of the human population exists in Asia. We do have Laura standing by right now with the uh, Nanonoko, the Nanonoko. Go. I am indeed here with the Nanonoko, Randy Liu, <laughs> in the flesh. Uh, look. <laughs> Six matches played, I think, for you. 33 points, all in heads up. So you should be feeling pretty familiar with this format, although normally online, right? Yeah, this is going to be live poker, so my uh, unfamiliar territory. But the good news is that the cube is kind of like a hybrid between live and online. That's true. So I think I'm going to hopefully fare better than, say, normal online, uh, normal live play. Well, yeah, you've been pretty good. <laughs> 33 points is not bad for the, for the first eight weeks of the season. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that, and you know, I feel sorry for Martin. He's probably gonna not get any points today, but <laughs> talking of <laughs> we'll Martin, see. have you played him much? Uh, I've actually probably never played with him. Ooh. Possibly we played random table online like a tournament, but no, I I don't recall ever playing with him, so I don't know much about his game. I didn't watch uh, the World Series when he won. Um, I didn't watch any of the previous matches that he played, so should be fun. Because when you played Sam Trickett, you were quite intimidated. You, were, you mm -hmm. were open about that fact. But this is just a, you know, a WSOP champion. Not he bothered only, about that. He only it's won fine. the biggest tournament of, of yeah, the fine. world, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I haven't done that yet. So maybe I got something to look forward to. You've had a little sneak peek in the cube as well. What, what were you thinking? Uh, it's really cool. Um, you know, I didn't, ex I didn't know that you couldn't see outside of the cube, but you could, people can see in. Mm. I think that's a really cool uh, feature about it. Uh, it's a really nice setup. And... I'm a little bit intimidated by the setup, to Ooh. be honest, you know, so we'll see. Well, we all stand out here and, and make silly faces in, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be ready. I'll be ready. Feeling pumped? Yeah, feeling good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, Should best be good of match. luck to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Nananoko. Back to you guys at the desk. And speaking of Nanonoko, in the booth today, providing guest commentary is a good friend of Randy Liu, Scott Ball. What, your t Twitch community manager, is that your proper title? Uh, community development and poker slash casino wow. stuff. Never going to get there. I, yeah, we just don't even need to get into that. No, I'm not going to. Do you know what the acronym is? No. <laughs> we got to just put them up by the Spell it out for me real quick. Hold on. The community development. CD. And poker and a. casino manager. You're a Kadakum. Yeah, I'm a Kadakum. Boom, He's, done. We got Scott Ball Kadakum here in the booth with us. Good friend of Randy Lou's. Uh, I assume that you think Randy is going to sweep this match against Martin Jacobson? Um, Randy's very good, so is Martin. I'm not going to like predict a sweep in anything because it's heads up and it gets kind of turbulent with the end, so there's a lot of variance. I think it'll be a good match. All right, well, let's take a look at Randy's team stats. Let's bring the Hong Kong stars up there. And Randy is, uh, we've got him in first place that's for points scored. Now, uh, Raiden Khan is doing a little bit better uh, percentage-wise, but Randy's got 33 points so far. And 
I guess, Eric, the, the, what strikes me here is that Nanonoko is like nearly halfway done with his matches, though, after today. Yeah, after today, it'll get a little uh, complicated for, for Selena Lin. Uh, they were probably past the halfway point, Joe, so I think it'll be fine. I think Nanonoko will be set up to play some more heads-up matches. All 33 points, as Laura mentioned, all coming in heads-up action. Really has been uh, selected as the heads-up specialist for the team. Wayne Zhang has started to play a little more heads-up lately as well. He's fared very well, actually, in heads-up action. You mentioned Raiden Khan, Joe. That's a, the, the person that swept a whole six months. I did table. mention him because his name was there, but you're going to actually tell us something about him. That's right. He was the first to ever sweep a, sweep a six-match match. He defeated and KO'd wow. every single opponent. Really a uh, risen, uh, risen. Raiden has risen. I was not trying to do a joke here. Uh, and then we see Guo Dong there, who had a really tough start to the, the season, but has really picked things up. Selena Lin as well. So we'll have to see what happens in the second half of the season with the Hong Kong Stars, who, has been, who have been the revelation so far this season. All right, well, let's do the exact same thing, only let's talk about the Montreal Nationals instead. How about that? Yeah, Montreal, just a uh, just a massive start to the year. There's no surprise that they're at the top. Their players are performing. Uh, we, we saw Joe, the LA Sunset, choosing two players to play most of their matches. This is more balanced. It is just paying off for Marc-Andre Ladusor, except for that guy at the bottom, that Ladusor guy who only stands <laughs> with four points. But he doesn't care because his team has done wonderful, uh, wonderfully, I should say. Jason Lavallee, who uh, Scott Ball eliminated in six-max competition at some point, but Lavallee did get a, uh, a, you know, a jab back at be defeating Scott 2-1 in heads-up action. Jakobsen, we see there, 67% uh, points rating. He's just been wonderful this year. Uh, six max action. He's played heads-up once, lost to Anton Wig, 2-1. to one. Mike McDonald, Pascal Lefrancois, one of the top heads-up specialists in the, in the league this year. He has stood up to some of the mightiest players, including Bryn Kenny, in one of my favorite matches so far this season. Lefrancois Kenny, a must-watch. So, Scott, I've Mark andre Ladusor, as far as I'm concerned, is kind of like the Ben Affleck of this league, like much better director than a player. Than and an better actor. looking, right? Exactly. Oh, also, yeah, he's got, he's, got, he's got the handsome thing down. He's yeah. doing much better as a manager than as a player. Let's take a look at uh, some of the top scorers. Yeah, and, and, yeah, total points percentage, show because we just mentioned how uh, Jakobsen, Lefrancois, and Lavallee, yeah. look at that, three of the top. And what the total points percentage is, for those that don't know, is the percentage of points that you're collecting that are available to you. So if you sweep a match, nine points, that's 100% of the, the, the points. Here I am doing math quizzes here. But Jakobsen, Lefrancois, Lavallee, really, really uh, getting all those points for that team. None surprising to see the London Royals up top in the Eurasia Conference, of course, with Trickett and Liv Bore. Liv Bore, by the way, just a, just a fantastic start to the year, one of the top managers in the league. And hey, Jeff Gross has only played three times, but he's dominated in all three of his matches. We get to see him tomorrow against Felipe Ramos and the Sao Paulo Mets. Well, Martin Jakobsen has got a shot to move up on that list today. He will be playing in just a few minutes, but first, he's down on the floor with Laura. He is indeed. I'm here with Martin Jakobsen, former world champion. Now, so far in the Global Poker League, you've played five matches, you've scored 25 points, but only three of those points have come from heads-up play. So, uh, are you scared about this? No, I will also only play one heads-up match, so... It's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer six max over heads-up, though. Yeah. I feel like I got more experience playing uh, uh, full ring or six max, uh, so... But uh, heads-up is fun. Yeah, it's a lot of action. And compare it to your WSOP final table. You're going in heads up. How different is it going to be playing heads up in this cube? Oh, this is uh, way more nerve wracking for sure. Really? <laughs> yeah, so I'm much. not it's sure. Fun. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. It's different. So it, it is kind of like uh, like I before the World Series. I played so many final tables before. Like I I, I felt pretty comfortable in that environment. But this is like totally new. So it's. Uh, it's different, yeah. And Randy mentioned that he didn't think he'd played you ever before. No, it's weird, yeah. I don't think I ever played with him either, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. Have <laughs> you followed so. any of his uh, games? I watched his uh, previous uh, uh, GPL matches last night, actually, yeah, to get a feel for how he plays, since I wasn't... didn't really have a clue how he plays, so... <laughs> so you think you know now? You understand a bit of his strategy, perhaps? Yeah, a little bit better. Okay. Mm. Pumped? Ready? Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. And you know what? Excited. All those kicks we saw you doing, there's enough space in there, I reckon. You could, you could do a few. Uh, there's no bag or anything. To hit on. Just not to an oko. Hit on Randy. Be yeah. careful. <laughs> it's going to be flying. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Best of luck. We'll All see right. you in the cube. Thank you. Back to you guys at the desk. Man, oh man, Martin Jakobsen sploosh, am I right? He is just, he is just a fantastic looking individual. I just, 
I know that it's not really even my thing, but I probably, I don't know, it's not appropriate either. I just, I got to be honest. I got to wear my heart on my sleeve. I know these guys feel the same way. I'll just, uh, I'll just be the one to say it. Scott, do you ever think that as a large man who used to punch people in the face for a living, do you ever think, I know you're friends with Randy Lou. Mm-hmm. I know you're friends with, but do you ever think, if I punch Randy as hard as I could, how far would he fly? Oh. I mean, it, I don't want anything bad to happen to Randy. I really don't. If he could somehow do this and not harm him, we would have to do it. Can we place an over under bet and then see if we can get Randy to do it one time? Yeah, him, absolutely. Like, big pads or something. Yeah, put him with a big padded suit. Randy, uh, you're in, right? You're in for that. I mean, he's willing to go into a cage like a hundred cube, yeah, for a hundred sure. degree cube, and play poker against the world champion. I mean, surely he'll one punch from no problem. From Scott yeah, Ball be shouldn't sure. be a problem. Eric, any any uh. Oh, we got some giveaways, huh? We got uh, some, we got a contest. Yeah, well, thanks Still to uh, thanks to the great people at Twitch, including uh, Mr. Scott Ball, who did a lot of hard work for us. Uh, the, the GPL is now available. Maybe you know this better than me, but you can now clip a thirty-second uh, video when watching uh, your the Twitch stream. Share that on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, using the hashtag GPL giveaway. And hey. If we like what you did there, if we like what you clipped and what may be a little cute title there, uh, we have examples on the site as well. Uh, we're going to give you one of those snazzy new GPL team merchandise shirts, so that's always exciting. And yeah, have you have you been able to, to play around, Scott, with the clip concept? Yeah, clips are awesome. And by the way, we might be a little bit biased about matches from yesterday um, versus, uh, yeah, there was a match <laughs> that's yesterday. That's right, I'm sorry, played. we should have gone over that. We, no, 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 we don't have to go over that. It's so 100% over. true, no, Scott no, played yesterday, no, no. he won two out of three no, matches no. against Chris Moore. <laughs> no, I know you weren't angling for that, but you're right, we should have covered that. We no, should've. we, should, we like should use clips from that, though. That that should be the match that the clips oh, come see. from. It should be like just ace high, boom. Just got him, use that clip. That'll be a good clip. And, and we can get a moneymaker's jersey. Yeah, a moneymaker's jersey. You know? Yeah, for, for sure. To be fair, I mean, the reason Scott is here today is obviously with his fine victory and with his performance so far this year, uh, the top scorer for the moneymakers, and by far their MVP so far. It's not been a good start to the year for the moneymakers, but without this guy, this team would be in major trouble. So congrats to you, sir. Scott Thanks, is here because he, he won his way onto the show today, That's not right. doing us a massive favor. Yeah. By showing up here at 11 o'clock To in the be fair, <laughs> one does have to win time with Eric Dennis and, and Stapes. It's just it's like, this This is not given away. Well, this is a big we, deal. Joe, we should be honest. We had booked Mormon for this and then had to sack, <laughs> had to sack him when really? he lost. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you either have to win time with Eric and Stapes or you have to swipe right <laughs> to get time with Eric and Stapes. I mean, it's really the only way. I, I would swipe right for you. Either of you, no problem. I would swipe right, 100%. By the way, she probably kill me for saying this, but I super liked Laura Cornelius this morning. I mean, I just buy those 30 at a time, so what do I care? I'm, by, like, a, I'm by, like a blue star millionaire. By the way, you're not the only one. I've seen that phone. That phone is on fire. Is it really? Yeah. Laura Cornelius blowing up today. We were about to have some fire and some explosions <laughs> inside the cube. Let's get down there for little Nano Noko versus Martin Jakobsen. Players, please enter the cube. Oh man, Who, who's gonna sweat first? Uh, me. Yeah, me and Joe. <laughs> Max, good call. <laughs> In the queue, who will sweat first? <laughs> Yesterday, Chris was actually dripping sweat. He was. Well, Nana Noak was wearing a hoodie, so that's gotta come uh, off first. 40, yeah. You know what? Strip poker may be a thing this summer if it gets much hotter here in G-Bus Vegas. Strip poker? Yeah, I think we're. I think we're starting. Good luck. Heads up for right, belly go. rolls. <laughs> <laughs> was I allowed to take off my jersey in the queue yesterday? I don't think I think that anything at this point that isn't clearly defined as a rule is totally fair game. So I, I mean, go, go for it. It's your personal brand, though. You don't want to mess up your Kadakum credentials. Sure, sure. I'm really worried about the Kadakum stuff. Okay, so a uh, big hand here to kick things off. Hand number two. First one didn't see much action. It's on you, man. <laughs> oh my God, it's so loud. It is loud. I bet Martin would have an easier time using that if it was attached to a weight set. (laughs) Well, Randy's never going to like slow play any hand ever because he's just Nananoko and Nananoko doesn't. So he's just going to be very, very aggressive, I would anticipate. And honestly, Randy's been crushing heads up formats so hard this season. I was going to ask you, like, but that's not typically his game though, right? He's like a full ring player or a shorthanded player. So me and him play probably like 25 games or so a week. Actually, okay. and uh, he's he's really put a lot of focus into grinding more heads up. He's, he's been working on his heads up game for the GPL. Yeah, he okay. takes this very seriously. Oh, okay, cool. I've been working on my standing behind a desk game. 
Yeah, it's a hard so, game, though. It's just, it's I've just been logging game. the hours. 10,000 hours I'm closing in on, I mean, standing no, behind the desk. Check. At least they make you stand, too. That way it's fair for the players. That's right. You know what I mean? Ace-9, still the best hand. Yesterday when Chris had, like, 4,000 trips, I tried to say that he had, like, a chip and a chair, but I realized he didn't have a Not chair, and I just chair. stopped myself. So I guess you're just dead drawing dead if you only have a chip, right? Well, he doesn't even have a chip, really. He's got an <laughs> iPad. Yeah, see, so how do you, uh, like, you're just drawing it's, dead, it's stone over. dead. If you no have, like, one can ever win. Yeah, exactly. Martin had the best hand. Rivers a pair of nines. Just want to remind everyone, you guys can participate in the show if you're watching on Twitch, twitch.tv slash GPL. I turned my cards face down before uh, the river room came. What, what happened there? I just folded. Oh, okay. And you can tweet at us, hashtag GPL. Yeah, forever. Eric, some folks on uh, Twitch are talking about uh, how you could bet on these matches. That's right. You can bet on the matches uh, via BetStars. If BetStars is available in your country, go ahead and bet on the action. Sorry, what, and what's BetStars? BetStars is a betting company that... Uh, Play on PokerStars, everybody. Play, yeah, you might, you might have any something to do with PokerStars, Joe. <clears throat> so that was interesting. Um, so this is actually a really juicy turn card, but Martin actually like gave Randy like a pretty pretty sweet grin there. And I definitely think that players in this in the cube itself need to be like talking to each other more than these guys already are, and I yep. hope they warm up to it. I actually think that had a huge impact on Chris yesterday, the fact that I just like, never shut up. Um, and I think that actually influences the matches quite a bit because most of these guys are used to just having such a slow, sure. calm, steady grind with no distractions. And when someone's sitting there thinking, you're just like sitting there talking endlessly, it's, it's hard for them to decide what's going on. Um, yeah, you're just sort of disrupting his flow a little bit. Exactly. I really like this, uh, this, this raise here from Randy. Um, and I think actually if he just barrels most rivers, I think it puts Martin in a pretty interesting spot actually. Um, and obviously Randy has like half the deck, but... Four, five, six, seven, eight. They both have a straight. I got mm -hmm. that one. Four, five, six. Seven. Yep. Okay. Definitely a straight for yep. both of them. Yep. No, Randy should bet here, Martin. I'm pretty sure he's just going to call. There's the bet. Eight thousand five hundred. I mean, this is a pretty significant pot. It's going to chop. 90% of the time. This, uh, live read 99% <laughs> of the time. I like to pretend. I don't I think know Martin ever folds. It's 100. Just say 100% of the time it's going to chop. Martin's never folding. Yeah, he should never fold here. Um, they don't really have enough behind to do anything crazy either. Good. Like, which one? I got Ace King. <laughs> really? He's going to know lineup. you're lying when you call. <laughs> Man, Martin might get beat up by Randy with it with line like that. You know what I mean? All right. Okay, so we'll see um, how far you can punch Nanonoko, and then how far Nanonoko can punch no. <laughs> Martin. You had a king. I can nice, nice, king. nice uh, bluff of your cards. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect the chop. Derek Bennett tweets in this tweets in to say chop pots. Not everybody loves them. I think they're both fine with it in this case. This is actually a very, very interesting matchup just because they're both so different stylistically too. Like Randy just being like the, the ultimate mid-stakes six-max crusher, I guess, for, for many, many years. <laughs> Martin obviously being the guy that just pinks the main event. Like that's no big right. deal, right? Just, just win the main event. One massive heads-up match versus several thousand other ones. And I'm sure Martin plays plenty of heads-up as well. I don't know too much about his online background, but... Near do I. Obviously, I mean, he was a crusher on the EPT long before he won uh, the World Series of Poker a couple yeah. years ago. So, uh, you know, no doubt, you know, he was an EPT champion already. He, he already knows how to play heads up. I'm just not sure how much he actually plays online. So that's the thing. If Martin, I don't know how much six max Martin grinds, right? But I think like the six max style kind of like translates better to this than like just general MTTs because you're going to be so much more aggressive because in MTTs you're just playing with like 20, 30, 40 big blinds and even 10 so often where you're just shoving, right? Which is great when you're short, but when you're deep like this, I feel like a cash player actually has a pretty significant edge. And I'm sure Martin is a great cash game player too, um, but that's what Randy's like primarily focused on just for right. so many years and that's how he's made his and living, And the right? format, you know, he's always been known as the fastest player in the world or the fastest yep. player in the net, whatever. What, I'm getting it wrong. I mean, you see how fast he folds there? He's like, right. pew, pew, pew. 
He knows how to use all of his fingers, guys. Every single one of them. Both players fought the gut shot. Backdoor hearts for Randy. <clears throat> Raging Hamster on Twitch says, Killer stares while sitting down is not as exciting. They must stand, stand strong, and stand their ground. I mean, you charged uh, you charged Mormon a couple times yesterday. I saw you go over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to. There was one time where he like, had the nuts, too, and I told him he could come over and sweat the call off me, and he came all the way over and was all excited, and then I just folded. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking a long time. You're not folding on the flop, right? <laughs> so, oh, I, I really like this raise here um, for Martin, but obviously with Randy's exact holding, he was never going to just muck there. Pretty sick turn card. Yeah, sure is. Wow. This is actually interesting too because if Martin just uh, if Martin if Martin fires here, Randy could put him on like a lot of like random diamond draws are going to be raising that turn too. So he might actually get one more call out of Randy depending on the sizing. Looks like he bet pretty big though. Yep, fifty five hundred. Just yeah. over. It's going to be tough pot. for Randy to just get away from this, though. And Randy did, in fact, call. So Randy bricks out just the pair of fours. And now Martin checks. Yeah. Martin has way more, like, random draws in his range, though, so Randy can't try to get creative or anything there. He just has to lose the hand. And that is exactly what happens. Randy loses the hand. That's 10,000 chips mean. shipped over yeah. to Martin Jacobson on hand like, number seven. It's like, because uh, you finished the action and you have to wait a little bit to see what you have. <laughs> I like, wasn't sure if you were checking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, he's got to do I something. Lost yet. It's like, oh. Yeah, it takes a while. It's the same all night. Yeah. Hear that? Martin's telling Randy what it's like to play all night <laughs> poker. <laughs> Last summer, Randy tweeted oh, boy, Poker boy. Stars and asked how many hands he had played, and they yeah. responded with something still, like 13 million. <laughs> See. Just want to do a little house cleaning here. We did not mention at the top of the show, each player starts with 50,000 in chips. Blinds start at 2 and 400. They go up every four minutes. I saw some in the Twitch chat why, ask why they're not using real cards and why we're using iPads. And to be honest, with, I want to talk about that a little bit. As a player, I think it's actually better to use the iPad format here. We're getting way, way more hands, and the hands are way faster. Way in the more. structure, you need, you need quicker hands. Because if you look at the match yesterday, like the long matches, we made all long matches. None of them were short. It was like 58, 60 hands a match. That's really not a lot. And if you had a live dealer, it might only be 40. Or, or if you were to play 50 or 60 hands with a live dealer, it would be 90 minutes to two hours per game rather than... Figured out the 15 green or 20. Right. Exactly. Though. Essentially, yeah. if we had live <laughs> dealers and stuff, I think it would hype in the variant, uh, make the variance way too high because it's going to be so much slower. I know. <laughs> so I really bad. like the electronic format. Look, you do lose a little something by not having the physical cards I mean, and chips out there, but what you, you gain is because you have to swipe way more poker harder. in a better format <laughs> yeah, for yeah, watching yeah. at home. Exactly, yeah. It's calling for action. All right, there you go. Yeah, see? Got to try it out. We've been talking a lot about Randy's uh, online game, but he's had a tremendous start to the 2016 season uh, live. 21st at WPT one at Bay 101, 30th in the EPT Grand Final main event. Dario San Martino finished eighth in that event. And uh, he had last week, where Scott was, he won a Run It Up Reno event, that mm -hmm. major festival hosted by Jason Somerville and the Run It Up crew. And an Oko won a nice trophy there. And you were there, Scott. Rigged. Rigged. I was. Randy's a, Randy, like, is... A crusher. He's really focused a lot on his tournament game this year, and it's just... I liked it so much better when Randy was terrible at live poker. <laughs> that was, like, so much more fun because, like, I could give him a hard time for being terrible at live poker knowing that he still was, like, destroying everything online, like, and just multi... Like, have, playing 57 tables of, like, 1-2 two and 2-4, two, whatever he was doing, and then being bad at live. But now he's good at live, too, and it's not that fun. We do have a race situation shaping up here. Randy three-bidding, ace-10, two-eights for Jakobsen. This will kind of say uh, quite a bit about Martin as well, too. Because Martin should anticipate Randy to be quite aggressive. And, like, or this is a spot where this. you can, <laughs> like, 4-bet and do it, like, fairly sizably with. And it's actually just probably going yeah. to just work. Oh, I, I but see calling is definitely more now. standard. I see. Okay. 
Jack nine tray, two spades. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're I can't right. bluff you on that part. Yeah, you know, like I really didn't. I thought. I thought he made it more. Oh, the blinds did go up. You're right. Yeah, gotta pay attention. Live poker, LOLs. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny watching the online wizard not realize the blinds went up in uh, on like not online but an actual virtual format. Right. That's. Pretty sick. I mean, you're only one tabling, Randy. Come on! <laughs> no, what a fish. Gosh. You'd think the pog yeah, champ would notice yes. that the blondes had gone up. <laughs> There's no way to show your cards. Is it? Cannot show just yet, but I Can assume that's going to be a feature eventually. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> try, try right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, try right now. All right. Did you see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank Eric. You. Has Randy yeah, lost yeah, one of his heads up? Yeah, actually, his last heads up, he was shut out uh, against Justin Bonomo of the London Royals. So that was a, a shocker for sure. Bonomo. Although not, not shocking that it came at the hands of Bonomo, who's been really, really crushing it heads up in the GPL. But yeah, other than that, Nananoko's had a great start to the year. Uh, a, a epic uh, win against uh, Jungle Man. Two victories over Elki. Uh, it's really been a, a fun start to the year for Nanonoko. Yeah, Jungle Man might be the nicest man in poker, you know what I mean? No sarcasm there at all. He just might be the nicest guy. Love Jungle Man. <laughs> Definitely one of the most entertaining. Right. Yeah, if you head on over to the, uh, the GPL's uh, uh, YouTube, you'll see a nice little video. Not safe for work, a video featuring Jungle Man, Elki, and Nanonoko playing. Uh, Nanon Elki might be the, actually the, the biggest cusser of the three, so that's sort of surprising. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes it's life for Elkie is just so sick, you know? That's right. So Rough sick. <laughs> Nano Noko yeah, gets Martin Jacobs in the fold, the best Martin. hand there. And these two are, even though Martin's got the slight lead, are just about even. Not enough to be a huge advantage at this point. This is the longest heads up match I've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah, my other, hand, my other match is last like. 12, 13, and 10 heads. You'll notice. Well, really? Yeah. It's interesting so to like, see Nanonoko's. You don't like, uh, playing poker, do you? No, I try to get it over with. <laughs> it's interesting to see Nanonoko's like limping ranges too, and like what hands he's actually limping. So we just saw him limp queen six. So let's see if he's going to mix in some much stronger hands too. Um, it's nice to see a free flop yes. with a hand like Funny. queen six. Um, do you actually know that? <laughs> so great. But as long as that needs to be balanced range or someone like Martin, right? So. Right, and but also it won't matter unless Martin knows what that range is too, Not right? Quite. Unless Martin has like a <laughs> perception of that range. Yeah, yeah, but I can't. I can't pretend. Did you see my cards? Yeah, it shows. I Martin had mentioned they need a mucking feature. <laughs> watching all of his matches um, yesterday. Well, the then there stuff, we go. So there should be like, some limping no, range, like people, yep. they're like they call it like ace high, and then like oh I had a boat, and then they just muck. <laughs> <laughs> then flip it over, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's also a huge disadvantage for Randy Liu, by the way, when a player like Martin's had this much time to actually go study all of his matches and he's played this much, and Martin's played one match and they were, it was very quick matches. Mm -hmm. So there's like very little material for Randy Liu to actually study on Martin. Yeah, Martin's loss to fellow Swede Anton Wig in week one, 14, 15, and 10 hands. Uh, the Swedes had to go somewhere, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been crushed by both of them in a six max. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Real bad. I just can't beat Swedish people. That's what I've learned. <laughs> if I have any Swedish people at my table at World Series, I'm just going to fold every hand. <laughs> why, why are you looking at me this time? Good news, Scott. Only two Swedes in the GPLs here. You're, you're fine. <laughs> yes. And I've had to play them both. No. That's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's unlucky. Unlike Nanonoku, who's been quite lucky this hand, but not lucky enough for Martin to have too big of a hand he can get in trouble with. Martin's going to bluff this hand, though, because he doesn't have enough showdown value, so he should be betting here a lot. And he's gonna get rip. Randy's gonna rip it. And he's gonna be so sad. <laughs> yep. So so sad, man. So sad, man. <laughs> I do. Based off the line Randy's taken, though, Randy either has like the stone nuts, basically like he has, or a hand like ace high. <clears throat> well, especially when that line includes a, r a river raise. Exactly. So when you look at Martin's hand with the queen six, like he's definitely behind like a lot of the ace highs that Randy could have potentially played like this, especially on that board. So I do like him actually triple bearing here. It's just unfortunate that Randy just happens to have, you know, it. There's the all-in from Randy. Oh, you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I did. It's a horror film. If you make the wrong decision, you know, like, you might fall in the, the pit under you. <laughs> 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 
If you make the wrong decision, Jigsaw actually comes in and changes your leg to that post there. There you go. Well, just the question was just what hand were you bluffing with? Do you have a three? A <laughs> three? Death by cube heat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what we call a suicide bomb. Let's see. Big plan is 1,200. So Randy now with a nearly two to one chip lead. So, so far Randy's limped like very much so the middle middle of his range, even the lower middle of his range, I would say. <coughs> you guys really have been working on the heads up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we This guy, we just thought he was gonna be like a human meat sack in here, just someone <laughs> standing between me and Eric, but it turns out he, he likes to do analysis. And by we, Joe means he. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We're, we're, we're a team, buddy, don't worry. Oh, what a sick turn. Randy just runs like God sometimes, so sick. And Martin does not catch up on the river. And the Sherwin check check, right? Yep, quick. All right. So I, I would love to see Randy bet something here like 4,800 or something. Or is Martin actually going to lead? John Paul the Great Ooh. on Twitch says crossing your arms is a sign of weakness. Yeah, well, yeah, Martin just led here. <laughs> Math is You're mm -hmm. the they need yeah, a, they no, need, they need Randy a just calls, right? You know, <laughs> like you can just feel like. They got the numpad. I mean, it's pretty hard to get called by a worse. Good. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get called by worse, but I just yeah. call here. What do you just got? a call from Randy, and that is really gonna put Martin Green, please, into yes. the danger zone. <laughs> Interesting lead by Martin. Tricky, huh? I mean, I understand he doesn't want the river to go check check because he his hand's a little too strong for that. Um, and the overbet does like stop Randy from raising him quite a bit there with a hand like two pair. If Martin would have led with like 4,800, Randy probably would have popped it and put Martin in a much more difficult That's one spot. Thing you never want to hear. I just call. <laughs> <laughs> I just call, yeah. Martin sub 20 big blinds now. Blinds are 6 and 1,200. Randy's such a beast. He flew in at like 1 in the morning last night. And he's oh, just really? like here. He's like, yeah, I'm going to fly in at 1 in the morning and play the world, one of the world champs a few hours later. No problem. Easy game, right? No, it just has. If you're Nano Noko. Okay. Over three fourths of chips. Remember, though, this is only game one of three, and it's not over yet. Oh, I thought I had a pair. You <laughs> thought you had a pair? Oh, uh, see? He's <laughs> real good at poker. Like, Isn't it amazing, though, good. that you can be Actually, an what, absolute what brilliant genius, genius and then so sometimes you just screw up? So He's like, nah. Yeah. I confused one number for another number. <laughs> it's even funnier when like they're actually digital cards, so you don't have to like actually really look at them. Like, you can just like pretend you're clicking the Also you can see that it tells you what your hand is. <laughs> see how it says high card A three. <laughs> I don't I actually don't think you can see that on the iPad okay. actually. I think we have to read our own hand strings. Let's see. You're in the small blind. It was confusing. What? You just called, I assume, right? Yeah. Oh, I went all in. Oh, <laughs> you went all in? What? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, you're trolling me. God. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, so gullible, Randy Lou. Really, I think you just called. Right there, that's a poker shark, everybody. The guy who just didn't know whether or not someone had gone all in. <laughs> He's played over 13 he's, million he's hands. He's 13 million hands and profited in almost all of them. <laughs> so there he is, everyone. Burns a kitchen down while cooking, makes millions of dollars. <laughs> Someone, welcome to poker. Someone in Reno actually gave him an oven mitt. Oh, I guess I called. He's got like five high and win. Yeah. Is this mid, mid to low part of his limping range he's actually <laughs> it, it's definitely still that like lower lower part of his middle range because it's just a suited 10 um it, it'll be interesting to see how how he adjusts though um because if he doesn't in this match if martin gets a text from someone or in future matches it's pretty exploitable right so he definitely needs to limp some of his stronger hands here but to be fair he hasn't had a lot of really strong hands to limp and he has a big chip lead right now so i was actually doing that with chris yesterday once i had a big chip lead just starting to have some limp pots that way you're just like That's lowering the variance for yourself the and sound. playing more That's hands scott yeah, you're kind of a giant nerd like did you ever watch star trek the next generation <laughs> 
I didn't watch all of it, but I did a bit, yeah. Well, there was uh, there was the Borg, and the Borg, you could only shoot them once or twice with your phaser, and then they would they would adapt, they would assimilate, and then you'd have to change the settings in your phaser. That's poker, right? Yeah, that's pretty much Martin. You get two shots at Martin, then that's it, and you gotta switch it up. I didn't have a lot of sex in high school, Scott. I just... <laughs> or any... Okay, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> doing pretty well in this spot. That's yeah, a great feeling when it just says 95% next to your name. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know that. But. I know, but it's pretty hard <laughs> to get that 95%. You know what I mean? When you go watch the VOD, you're like, oh, man, I just was like, I was going to win that hand. You know, it's even sicker when the river's just a king, or like an offsuit king. You're just like, oh, 5% just wins. That happens a lot. It happens. Know. happens 5% of the time, It seems like it happens more than 5% <laughs> of the time, but I'm told it's only 5% <laughs> of the time that 5% wins. Martin will have the, the winner here if he gets to showdown. Randy's not making it easy on him, though. Damn. Damn. Wow. <laughs> nice hand. So Martin turns the <laughs> pair of eights into a bluff? I mean, yeah, I think that's an interesting bet from Randy. I'm not, like, it's pretty, going for some pretty thin value when you have a pretty big chip lead. I'd kind of prefer to check back. Um, but as long as you just snap pulling no raise like you did, I guess it's okay, better. Wow, Martin just getting smashed by the deck now. Two pairs pretty good. I kind of like to see the, the luck go both ways in these matches. I kind of, uh, you know, it's for sure. back in the game. Yeah. When, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Paul played against Fabrice Soulier, mm -hmm. Aaron Paul ran really, really hot for a lot of that. I don't think there was much was that good. Fabrice could have yeah, done. You know, some nuanced things. Maybe other people would say, oh, he could have done this or that. But, like, it was probably always going to turn out the same way. And I like to see it sort of go back and forth so that we really get a true representation of, like, you know, how these guys match up, heads up. Yeah, you want to see real poker for sure. That's actually what makes poker so cool, though, to me, and what makes the game so exciting and what it brought me into it is that there's actually, like, so many different ways you can approach every hand that's played and there's actually a lot of like multiple ways that can be acceptable or not even bad and it's like trying to find the most optimal approach and that's what makes the game so fun and challenging can is that someone might do something I correct have. just not the though. best just or, or not to your do. kind of correct exactly or not my kind of correct refreshes it's really fun when you're talking to a bunch oh, of yeah, great players and you ask them all about the same hand and three people give you three different responses yeah and you're just like, okay, wow, that means this is this means for us an interesting that spot. That means I couldn't have screwed it up that bad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Trust me, I usually <laughs> find a way, Joe. That's right. We all do. Randy's jammed on Martin, who's starting this hand with exactly 20 big blinds. Should be a pretty easy fold. Yeah, not quite at the calling it Whenever off with King this, High stage. Like, you should do the, like, the fake ninja call. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yeah, misclick, yeah. Has there been any six slow rolls in the cube yet? One slow roll wasn't super slow. I think we timed it at 22 S seconds. Yeah, Jonathan Chaffee, we, we thought he was going to go for, for a two-minute or about 22 seconds. But as we, as we mentioned, Scott, probably a good thing because the bar is set low. Whereas <laughs> when, we, when we saw online play, Thomas Marchese took four minutes right, right out of the gate in week one. That, you know, the bar is pretty set high. <laughs> four minutes for a, for a six slow roll is, is pretty tough. Eric, uh, I just want to quote uh, Dude with ADD on Twitch, who's saying it's kind of terrible to not show stack amounts. Well, I feel like maybe you want to up the dosage on your medication then, so you can focus on the screen for more than one or two seconds at a time, because we do have stack amounts on the screen, right under where it says BB and D. You can see their stack sizes there, but Dude Joe, with we, ADD. We've gone one step further. If you look underneath the cards, there's now a sick power bar. Oh, look at that. And you can tell that Nananoko has a lead in this match by looking at that sick, what do we say? I mean, not Mortal Kombat, but we're in street, a little yeah, street fighter power bar. Yeah, kind of like a street bar, fighter right? element, yeah. right? Like, it's like a health bar. I stopped. Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything other than Neo Geo. I don't know what game. I only have King of Fury Fighter. I made it. King of Fury Fighter? I don't remember what it was called. 
<laughs> Kings of Fury, I think, might have been one of them. Damn, yeah, I want to try King of Fury that. Fighter. King of Fury Fighter, I'm working yeah. on right now. Let's let's get together on this. Yeah, can we have a money match? Like King of Fury Fighter money match. <laughs> Uh, it's an interesting spot, actually. I don't know what live tells to look for. I'm not going <laughs> to look for anything. Uh, I guess you're not racing, but... So I, uh, I think Ren is going to find a call <laughs> here. You can uh, do the hide card button thing now. Because the hide your card diamonds button. just right. missed, and this is one of those spots where it's... Uh, really weird. Like, he just happens to have a seven. Like, it's really hard for Martin to... I'm going to preserve much. My, oh. my life. He folded this tournament. Mm. All right, Even so he gives a little bit back to Martin. Good choice. Why is that 1,000 to 2,000? So things are getting a little more shallow out there, and that's another thing that in addition to, you know, one player can run super hot, you don't get a true representation. We've seen a couple of our matches, but I think one of your guys' matches went so long that eventually, you know, I think Chris got a little lucky against you in one spot. Scott doubled up, and then you guys basically had to take a couple of flips to end the match. Yeah, exactly. The match was like 60 hands, I think. We had a match go over a hundred hands uh, on day one. On day one, it was, yeah. CA match, yeah. How does that even happen? Just like you get a Hollywood flips. actor and a really good poker player. And yeah, and it was very, <laughs> very much. Two guys perfect. who were reluctant to call it off in spots where like most of your GTO players would have, and it, pretty much every time they didn't, they were right. It was really weird. Like you know, it was a couple times I think Fabrice folded an A6 to like an eight big blind shove and was yeah. right and. Aaron folded, a, I think, a, an ace at least one time and was right. That's so sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's super hard to, like, sell the, like, well, this is incorrect, but it just so happens to be right this time. <laughs> it was actually an interesting spot for Randy because that's a turn card that, like, Martin's, like, pretty much all we go always going to bet. Even in stacks. <coughs> Blinds now 1,200, 2,400. And as Randy just said, their stacks are nearly even. They're right around 20 big blinds each now. Yeah. It's interesting that Randy just chose to raise the 6 call? 8 when he was. I think he left, no, he left me a chip or two. Oh, I was going to call. <laughs> uh huh. Can't call the all in with eight high. He's limping less now. The blinds are getting bigger, and I'm not sure if this is actually normal for Randy. Well, first of all, we have to ask, did he notice the blinds got bigger? <laughs> That's true. He may have not noticed. But if he did, and he's, and he's, and he's not like adjusting and raising more, that's interesting. Well, he was able to check What's his big blind here, flops top yeah. pair. Jakobsen does not bet his pair of nines. It, I don't think they stopped. No, right? I don't. I think you just. It's a good turn for Martin. All in every hand. <laughs> you want to just take like a, an hour break and see what happens? In the six max, they do that. Oh, they do. Yeah, two two four is the last one. Uh, I'm just gonna shake. The two pair. <laughs> yeah. Checks the two pair. <laughs> Cannot value bet that board. Yeah, when I said that, you won too. I mean, I won. So that's a, that's a good read. I guess I call. I guess I check. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't feeling good about my hand in, anymore after that. Well, checking could mean like, just give up. But... Yeah. Martin now with the slight lead. Randy I'm flops sure. a pair. I guess. Couple I of back did. doors. I guess. I guess I fall. <laughs> I mean, these two are, at so this, this point, are just... Might be longer than all your matches combined? Basically dead yeah, even, right? right? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just basically <laughs> trading the chip lead back and forth. It's like 10 hands, 12 hands, and... Like a last longer, <laughs> last longer bet. He's going to win that one. I believe regain the chip lead. Next time might be too late. Queen on queen. 
Cass just said, Chip's mentioning that these two look more serious than Mormon and Ball. Scott, I get the feeling that at some point yesterday, Mormon was actually annoyed with uh, you speaking so much. And I, obviously, that was an obvious strategy on your part. Do you agree that at some point maybe things got not uncomfortable, but you noticed uh, a difference in Mormon, especially you being up early in that match? Yeah, I think that for sure he ended up... I think he was tilted from the play in general yep. and losing, and then the, the needling definitely right. didn't help that you sure um, not a professional at all. GPO heads up player? Uh, <laughs> I he, 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 he didn't like it. <laughs> right, no, absolutely. Stop absolutely. Stop. You just quit the World Series. It's like, yeah, sign me up for these. It's actually really interesting. Um, I think that you're going to see a lot of big variety here. Yeah. I, I personally, like, I, I talk a bunch of smack to these guys, yeah. but in reality, like, I... Like Chris is actually someone I've had several conversations with. Same with Lavely. Like, we're all friends. Um, and I, I think that like that element of smack talk and having some fun is like exciting for poker. And it's different because it doesn't happen in tournaments, right? Or cash games in general. People just don't talk smack unless. Well, you're especially on the European tour, which I mostly work on, because you got six guys at the final table that are all from a different country. Right. Exactly. Speak different languages. Yeah. And I think it makes it exciting for the audience too, and people are kind of needling each other back and forth. And I was having a lot of fun with it. And to be honest, when it got a little bit tilted, I decided I should probably turn up a little more actually yeah, absolutely. because it's uh, I want to win you know blinds are up by the way 1400 2800 I believe are the blinds and uh, both players have flopped pretty big here this is a three bat pop pre-flop 17,000 in the middle trips for Jakobsen up and down for Nanonoko and Jakobsen is betting a fairly small amount into this pot about a third of the pot I think Randy might go broke the sand or win the sand. Like, he's either going to win or go broke here all on time. Randy just calls, leaves himself 29K behind. Hmm, that's a really good turn card for Randy, actually, because now he can just get rid of it a lot easier. Randy realizes that he's going to have... He's going to be drawing dead a lot of the time. And misses anyway. That so turn I saved Randy a lot of chips. And Jakobsen's... Trying to induce. <laughs> Will Randy fall for it? He is an online blaster. Hi, yeah, <laughs> he hasn't folded yet. He did. Oh, wow, he did fall for it. Look at that smile. I mean, that's not a tell. Jacobson <laughs> 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 jams. Nanooko is going to be forced to fold. I'm going to assume you were never bluffing there. It would be a sick one. It would be pretty sick. What a hand. Nanonoko now in the danger zone. <clears throat> wow, you're really short now. Yeah. That's, that's a bad. big ring Martin's got there. See that? I, I did not miss it, but I don't know how it's possible if it's as big as you say it is. Maybe I just assumed it was his fist. <laughs> <laughs> that golden fist of Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a tumor. I didn't want to see anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Randy with the hammer, and he's dominated. It doesn't get much worse than that. Yeah, Seven deuce yeah, and dominated. Four, right? <laughs> so, 40 hands this match, which I do believe is more than all of Martin's three previous matches. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Randy yeah. has a good chance to double up here. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Uh, Domination Ooh, Nation. Like Randy is the king. And since he... Did not hit running kings. Martin Jakobsen is going to double up, Randy. 40 hands. Huh? But even doubling up at this point right, nice isn't one. stellar. 2,800 is the big blind, which I believe is that's Randy's exact stack, 28,000. So still just 10 bigs for Randy. I just noticed these guys don't actually have their jerseys. Yeah, I think you're allowed to opt out. I think that if you make a big enough stink, Alex. Oh, really? Okay, oh, okay. God. Oh, so nice. Eric shaking his head. Why don't they have jerseys? I just didn't have those ready. Well, to be honest, yeah. come, yeah. let's not put a jersey on Martin Jakobson. Look at the muscles there. Look at that forearm. It's, it's fun. And as we were playing around, Martin Jakobson is one of them. How do you know how many hands it's been? Oh, it's <laughs> good. <laughs> that, was only, that was the only Randy! Thing <laughs> so, the first game of three games in this match between Nano Noko and Martin Jakobson goes to Martin Jakobson. It really felt like Randy was dominating for yeah. a lot of that match, and then when the blinds got up, there was a cup that was like maybe a slight misstep, and then just some sort of like semi flips that didn't go his way. Scott, what do you think? Watching your good friend out there, I think it's one of those spots that the blinds get so big, and when they it happens pretty quickly, and when the blinds get big, you just kind of have to win a few hands, or you're you're just dead. 
Do you think um, that there's anything that Randy could have or should have done to put it away sooner than that? No, it's hard to put away a good player without just monster hand over monster hand in the early stages of a heads-up match like this. So there's nothing you can do to really force it. You can't really like close the door. I mean, you can, but it, like so many things just have to happen in such a specific order for it to happen. Like, like you have to just have like some spot where they just have to call off with ace high, that, they, that, that just a six spot or just monster hand over monster hand. Like these guys just don't want to lose early because they want to see as many hands against each other because they probably will feel they have an edge over each other. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Eric, what does this mean? Three points on the board for the Montreal Nationals. Yeah, the Nats now at 109 points, uh, one step away from becoming the first team with 11 wins in the league. 109, obviously, they're still in first place overall. Now eight points ahead of uh, of the second place. Eli Los Angeles sunset in the division, so really a good start to the year, and it just keeps on getting better for the, for the Nats. All right, we're going to hear from Laura and our players coming up pretty soon. S Scott, any predictions for a match number two? Do you think Randy will change anything or keep doing more of the same? Um, I think he'll probably continue to do a little bit of the same. I do hope I see a few changes, to be honest. Um, but I think he played pretty well, and just you know, that's just what happens. All I would like to see the Hong Kong Stars take some points to the Nationals, because all the Americas teams are winning, and my team's on the bottom of the Americas Conference, so I need the, some of the Americas teams to lose. points <laughs> going to America. Well, we're going to hear from Randy himself and Martin Jakobsen. Both are on the floor right now with Laura Cordelius. Martin Jakobsen, congratulations. Three points. The rich getting even richer. Montreal Nationals now flying high in the That's conference. That's how the world works, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> Gifted a poor. I thought you might win that. It was seeming to be in your favor a little bit in the earlier stages, and then uh, it was the king-queen hand, I think, that changed it all around. Yeah, uh, I didn't see the king-queen yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing he bluffed me yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I don't remember. Or maybe it was uh, the king-king jack-jack, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. How did you find it in there? Uh, it's actually, it's a little intimidating because you got the music going on and the heartbeats and everything. Oh, fake heartbeats. But, uh, you know, it's pretty fun in there. But, uh, you know, I just got to get used to it more comfortable. And, you know, he just keeps on, like, winking at me or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> it was funny because you guys were not talking at all in the very early stages. And it took a while. And the more the game went on, the more you started to chat more and open up a little bit. Maybe by the third game, you're going to be screaming at each other across there. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, why like, did you suck the, out on me? Get should... your hopes up, but maybe. <laughs> did you find uh, intimidating at all? Not intimidating, but it took took a while to get used to. It. I think that's why we yeah. kept quiet in the beginning because it takes quite a lot of focus to to do the math and uh, figure out all the buttons and stuff. But well, three points so far to Montreal Nationals. Are you gonna take one back? I would like to. I would not like to get <laughs> zero and three here, but uh, yeah, you know, it's a, he's a very good opponent and. Hopefully we can uh, put on a good show and a good, um, good match for you guys. Well, we will see. We'll be going back to the guys at the desk after this very short break. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches and much, much more. was that? Ew. Joe Stapleton's next job, apparently. He's I don't know. Self-promoting his work. Do you know how much that ad cost me? Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A lot of money. Uh, Nano Noko and uh, Martin Jakobsen getting back into the cube right now. Uh, Scott Ball, as Nano Noko's really good friend, let's say that uh, Martin Jakobsen somehow won you over, somehow got you to change camps. What would you tell him right now in order to adjust to Randy Lou? Um, I would say he should be raising his limps a lot more than he is. Don't let Randy get away with limping as much as he is. Yes. 
For yeah, sure. That makes sense. Erica, anything that we should be looking for league-wise coming up in game number two here? Yeah, Scott uh, mentioned something, actually, uh, before our last break, is that the fact that uh, the Americas Conference teams have won every single one of these matches so far. So if Jakobsen can win one, uh, win on the next two, that'll be four straight. Now, that's... Bad news for, for Scott's team, of course, because that means that you're, you're usually you're playing your own conference. So obviously, if you win, the points, points stay within the conference. That's right. So I mean, that's the the good news. There's good news and bad news that way. But the bad news is that Scott's team is not you know able to go up in the standings when that happens. However, there is a rivalry brewing between the Americas Conference and Eurasian Conference. So there is bragging rights here. And if Montreal can win this, that'll be four and zero for the Americas. So the battle of which conference is better. Already, you know, off to a great start at 4-0. If if that were to happen, yeah, it feels bad, man. I need these America's teams to lose, and we need to win. We need to we need to win yeah. somehow. We need to just we need to win all our matches, I guess. I also feel like that you know you say bragging rights are, are up for for grabs here. I feel like the Montreal Nationals have some of the best braggers in the league, like yeah. Jason Lavalle. I mean, come <laughs> on, that guy. He's awesome, man. Oof. He's hilarious. He has got a mouth on him, that one. I do not want to be in a position where Jason has bragging rights over me. What do we say? Should we get back down to the cube? That was like the sickest needle of me ever. That was awesome. Because Jason totally beat me heads up. <laughs> Didn't even know it. it Didn't pretty, even know it. Pretty brutal. <laughs> Sick needle. <laughs> so we're gearing up for game number two. Nan Nano Noko and Martin Jacobson are back in the cube. Let's get down there. At least we've learned that American poker players are obviously better than European poker players Ooh. in this league so far. It's just been fact. Obviously. <laughs> Largest sample oh, size available says the World Series of yes. main event now. Americas are better than Eurasia. Nano Noko, pocket jacks to kick things off. We're in hand number two already. That's how fast it goes in the cube. And Martin has flopped a pair. Remember, 50K starting stacks for these two jokers. Blinds start at two and four hundred. Four minute blinds. Martin's now got a pair and a flush draw. Six on the river. Randy's got this at showdown. Ship me to pop, please. Hmm. Check back by Randy. And something. Can oh, yeah. That's I think awesome. he might, might be missing <laughs> some thin value there. But yeah, but I do. As Martin uh, actually just said himself. I started to think. Look at you, you all agreeing Martin. with the world <laughs> champion. That always feels good. <laughs> King Queen versus two nines. If you're wondering, if you're just joining us, look on the right hand side there. We've got an X and a check mark. That means that Martin's won the first of three games. Wow. There's some big hands to like start this off. Just jacks and nines back to back. Randy's three bet the two nines. Yeah, because been calls with King Queen, 10 high flop. I never know how to play King Queen here because I was like, let me just see one more card. Come on. This is actually when it becomes. Uh, so oh, it's so a small this actually becomes Randy. a lot easier because he also has the King of Hearts and there's two hearts out sure. there. Sure. So there's like so You many can great see turn the next cards. card. Yeah. Eight of Diamonds, not one of those great turn cards. Randy now slows down. And Martin checks behind. Six on the river. Four cards straight out there, potential flush. Randy checks for a third time. My guess is he would call some reasonable bet here. He thinks it more likely that Martin might fire with an ace high or a king high hand than he would to call with it. Yeah, it's an interesting check. Um, Just goes check, check. Yeah. Got better an ace high. Oh, wow. <laughs> Should have interesting to think what Martin thinks forward. he's beating there, actually, when he's checking back like yeah. that. He went all in. <laughs> well, are you sometimes obviously you're checking back because you think you have a showdown value is a big part of it, but maybe yeah, you, sure. maybe you check back because you just don't think don't Randy's that. folding. That that that's totally so true too. It heads minute, up right? though. And you know how many times I played a minute like ten times, and I've got zero caches. Zero caches. <laughs> zero caches to the main event. I hadn't made day. I hadn't made day two dinner break before. And I played it like seven times. I had made day <laughs> five in like three years. I mean, I, I was like, yeah. I've only made like three or four day fives. Or like 20 years from now or like 40 years from now? <laughs> Eventually, yeah. If you keep playing, you'll win it one day. Just need to make sure I don't die, right? It's gonna be <laughs> I was going to say a lot of the good heads up players have this philosophy of like you should try to win every single hand you play. Right. Um, 
so yes, you could be checking back saying like, oh man, I'm just going to lose this hand, but I think a lot of the experience heads up, guy, heads up guys. What do I have to do to win? Exactly. What do I have to do to win? How do I take this down right now? Well, Martin's picked up a flush draw to go with his gut shot. It's up and down, excuse me, and a flush draw. Randy up and down as well. And really King, King High might be the best hand some of the time. No, it's six, six thousand. Six thousand now. Yeah, Martin's just overbet the pot big time. Interesting. And got Randy to, to fold the hand with buttons. decent equity. <laughs> Two X, three X, yeah, four X. The slider is taking too long. Heading into the 2014 World Series, Martin was known as one of the top players not to win a major title. He had six top four finishes in WPTs, EPTs, and at the WSOP, and then just decided to shut up all the critics by actually winning the main event for $10 million. Not a bad first major victory uh, on his resume. No, $10 million is a little bit of money. That's a pretty, pretty good, good day. That's a pretty good day. I'm sorry, what? That's $10 million? Correct. Is what you win for the World Series? That is tax-free dollars as he is a resident of London, England. Does a lot of money in poker, huh? Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. Jeez, ten million. I should think about playing, maybe. Nah, 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 nah. You, you have to pay <laughs> ten thousand. Wait, to get wait, wait, what? That's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you just have to dodge like eight thousand landmines. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Diamond, 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 diamond. Randy's raising. There seems to be this trend. I, I do a little bit okay in the beginning, but you know, <laughs> you might you might want to wait it out. turns, yeah. I just wait it out. Main event victory did propel him to number eight on the GPI World Rankings at that point as of November 2014. Uh, as of today, ranked number 389 in the world, but Jakobsen has not spent that much time on the circuit this year. Yeah, I mean, when you win the main event, you could take some time off. Some time off, yes. You would never see me ever again, <laughs> ever. He seems like the kind of guy that likes big, you know, having a balanced life too, Yeah, which I think absolutely. is very... Um, uh, underrated by most poker players. I think trying to have more of a life balance is like super, super important. And most of like actual like just crushers that I know have a great life to work balance in, in this game. And he seems like one of those guys that does that very well. Yeah, Martin and I once had a uh, on air, a green juice discussion and the Twitch chat did not appreciate that discussion. So Martin and I will not be talking green juices today. Have, uh, <laughs> I did enjoy bigger. my green juice yeah. this morning, Joe. Bigger. Got it. Sounds, now I know at least it's not a misclick, right? <laughs> Sometimes it is. That's why I gotta balance it, make it on purpose. Huh? <laughs> Paint versus one pair. Little pocket pair. Five for Nanonoko. This is new. What is? Re-raising me. A three. It's <laughs> all in, though. It's not an over bet. Pretty good flop for Martin. It's an interesting check. Obviously, it's so strong that it's it, it, it's great in this particular spot. Um, that. It's also good because, like, when you have both a queen and a jack, it makes it harder for Randy to have a hand like king queen, ace queen, um, ace jack, king jack. Now Martin yeah. goes for it, and he's going to get a fold from Randy. Is that an overbet again? <laughs> yeah, it was eight thousand in the middle. The bet was twelve thousand. Hmm. Have you tried the underbetting? You know, like <laughs> betting. No. Oh, wait, is that an option? <laughs> like less than a big blind? Yeah, it confused me. Blinds three and six hundred. Just about evenly stacked. These two may just trade them back and forth again until we get down to flips, Phil. Man, it's super interesting watching the matches from this angle and actually like trying to think about them as the they're happening, not just watching them for fun, like as a as a leisurely thing, you know? <clears throat> you pick up on so many little things. I wish I could see my opponent's cards all the time. You're not doing honest. a million other things like when you're watching at home. Yeah, exactly.
I'm actually weird. I actually watch, like, watch, quote unquote, a lot of broadcasts while I'm like working, but actually like just listen and mm -hmm. treat it as like almost like a radio show almost while I'm working. It's I think a lot really of people nice. do it that way. Yeah, it's really cool. I can't, I can't, I'm not a good multitasker. If I have a broadcast on and I'm doing something else, I'm only ever focusing on one or the other, and so I'll realize it's been on for three hours and I haven't heard a word of it. Definitely a good time to do it. Didn't have much. Martin picks up that small pot. Nano Noco, pocket aces. It's a pretty good hand. One of the best. Yeah, I like getting that hand. I've had it four times this summer and I've lost three pots. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Vitamin K on Twitch asks, why don't they have chairs? The answer? Because they don't have any. Because chairs are overweighted, bruh. Thank you for your question. How are you doing on time? 17, you? Uh, 16. We're doing uh, better. Yeah. Plenty of time for these two. By the way, the time they're referring to, both players get 20 minutes worth of time bank. When it is out, you are in the hot seat. You have four seconds to make every decision, or you get folded. That actually came into play yesterday, too, um, in terms of chatting with Chris. Um, he's a thinking player, for sure. He's very cerebral. And when we were when we were playing and I would talk to him, he would take, like, there was one hand where he literally burned like three minutes and I just because I never shut up and it was like probably a pretty standard decision but if you're bugging someone like that and making them waste their time making all of a sudden they get lower it puts a lot of pressure on them and Absolutely. I think it gets in their head yeah and the time bank matters I mean we saw one hand where Aaron Paul meant to call and I think uh, he had a pretty strong hand a straight or something yeah. and ended up just not getting to the call button in time so it it does have its effect and I will also say it's even bigger effect when you're playing on a platform that you haven't played on a lot before. Right. So it's not like stars, you can just put your mouth, mouse by that, where that call button's going to be. And just be ready for like, it. Because he's seen it 13 million it. times, right? Right. It's much more challenging when it's a new platform. Absolutely. Why is that four and 800? Slide them. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Trying to practice. Got to know when to fold them. And you might have seen Randy's hand movement there to fold your card. You actually sort of grab them with your fingers and slide them up off the screen. And there's actually a GTO way to do that too to save yourself time, by the way. Really? Yeah, if you do it with two fingers, you can fold both cards at the same time. Yeah, oh, if you do it with baller. one each, you like actually use like two or three extra seconds yeah, to just reach and reach. <laughs> that's and not like, fair. That time thing is important, man. I can't believe if you're just giving this away on the stream. That's true. Yeah, my friend. free information. It's because whoever I want to play, whoever I play next, I want to have a chance. You know what I mean? Nice. Kappa. Puppet's got ball. <laughs> Just kidding. Sasensi on Twitch says, when Jungle Man gets in the cube, I doubt he'll be standing like these two. What do you think he'll be doing? Standing on his head? He might be climbing the walls, knowing Jungle Man. Yeah. It would be so much fun to play Jungle Man in the cube. I would love to play Jungle Man I in the cube. I would love to play Jungle Man in the cube with you standing in between us. Good call. I mean, I just want to be in the cube with Jungle Man <laughs> locked in the cube. and like. You're a man who can defend himself. Yes, I would defend you, Joe. No problem. Okay, good. Well, now, what I don't want to see is Randy Liu in the cube with Jungle Man. <laughs> <laughs> Both players flopped a nine. Martin's been out kicked the whole way. And it looks like it's going to go check, bet. <laughs> so I think Martin's going to think Randy has a nine a lot here when he plays it this way, but he's going to have to wonder about that kicker. Green. Martin does call. Yay. Uh, nice bet. Thanks, Green. Hmm. I think Randy's pad turns up green when he wins a pot. Yeah, is that what happens when you're down yep, there? That's right. I think so. I, I was actually just trying to look at my opponent's suffering, not the pad when I knew I was winning a pot. <laughs> it's a way to get max value out of your time in the cube. Absolutely. Randy flops a pair in a flush draw. Goes check, check on that flop. Jakobsen picks up a gut shot. And fires at it. Randy raises him. It's always nice having a pair of flush shot. You can just raise and go, whatever. Exactly. It's on you. Maybe you fold. <laughs> maybe we get it in. He says it's on you. <laughs> I love it. 
Martin doing a better job of tuning him out than Morgan was doing of tuning you out and makes the fold. Yeah, Randy, I honestly think that Randy should be talking way more here because Martin's definitely another very much so thinking player. Um, but it's also kind of like... It, it, it takes a kind of person that will actually just be able to sit there and just talk trash for two hours straight to someone too. Like it's just a different thing to do. It takes a lot of energy. It does, it, it does. does. Um, Believe me, I know talking yeah, trash for hours straight is <laughs> exhausting. But I've always been a mix of uh, oh, both. Got it. So Yak is in is three bet, the 10 9 suited out of the big yeah, blind. Kind of, kind of, you know, Kevin Wicks. Tells me what you have. Every, you everything is a mix. <laughs> Randy will not be folding, queen suited. Queen eye flop, I'll one diamond, one spade. Yeah, it's tricky. Oh, it depends. Who's the book? Okay. I'd love to see this <laughs> flop good. <laughs> if Martin checks, I'd love to see Randy okay, check back. Book of Mormon. Yeah, those are two very <laughs> different books <laughs> in ratings and yeah. content. <laughs> Question is, which one's better? <laughs> Full house now for Randy as Martin picks up a no good flush draw. Now they're so quiet. I feel like we should whisper. There's a guy who wrote a really long thing complaining about how we're talking over the players. I'm going to wait till they start talking to read it. <laughs> I'm going to wait till some really good conversation between the two of them, then read that whole thing. You know what that means. <laughs> Try not to talk about the players. It's hard sometimes, though, you know? Well, it's live, so we don't really know when they're going to talk, and sometimes exactly. it's awkward to... <laughs> so I knew, was, I, I, I knew I actually didn't have to worry. <laughs> Stop in the middle of it. Well, I did before. Yeah, Sentence. Was, on that board, though, like... Yeah. <laughs> if you go all in there... Really we can try... So I'll be like... We'll get... <laughs> not, I'm not reading really your book. Fluffy up a seven. To man. dance around it. <laughs> Whew. We need to be able to talk like in between their words when they breathe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like as soon as they sp like, something and go, like, like get ours out there real quick, like two words in. Now, Joe, Jeff Gross and Felipe Ramos tomorrow, there is a yes. chance that we're not even involved in the, that broadcast whatsoever. There's going to be some chat there. Those two guys love themselves, some chatter. So, should be a fun one. And apparently, the Brazilian crew is coming in studio, so it might get loud in here. Really? Vam is it Vamo? Or Vamu. Vamu. I'd say Vamu, but I am no expert in Brazilian. Well, we're going to get to the chant. bottom of that de that debate tomorrow. If only we have had, if we had, you know, had Felipe yesterday, we could have asked him. If only that <laughs> could have happened. <laughs> Jumping around, like, yeah, he's going to do it. <laughs> so Randy, oh, well. extreme close up. Randy, uh, up to almost 70k now. <clears throat> Looks like it might be over 70k <clears throat> after that last hand. Felipe, Felipe was a heck of a nice guy. He's a talkative guy, but man, he's just, just like, uh, I don't want to, I'm going to use a weird word to describe another man, but he's a very sweet man, I guess is yeah, what I would absolutely. describe him. He was very, very nice. Yeah, his passion, too, is very, very infectious, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Philippe is a strong contender for Dark Horse and who loves it more. Yeah. I mean, he loves it. Yeah. He really, he loves poker so much, he would let poker beat him every night and still go back to poker. Yeah. He would be a battered poker spouse. Well, if you follow him on Twitter, he busted the 10K dealer's choice yesterday, and it did not even... I had to reread to make sure he busted it, because it was such a positive, positive tweet. <laughs> that is uh, kind of scary. Where's the complaint here? Oh, there it is. <laughs> and Arnoko, very strong hand. Checking to Martin, hopefully, to, uh, to induce a bet here. Joe, it is Vamo. Vamo. Gonna be hearing a lot of that coming from the gallery tomorrow. Check, check on the river. Jakobsen doesn't bite. Randy gets a few more chips. I would have folded. Trust me. I, I had a slider and I looked at you and I was like, I don't know. reads? Yeah, you fucking got it. Like, yeah, he's got it. Randy flops a gut shot. I'm gonna make a reality TV show, like just stick two players in here for like a month. All they gotta do is play poker. <laughs> yeah, that would be very entertaining. 
thing. And then like, um, you have to win so many matches to get out of there, you know? And then they give you like the worst food and everything. There's so much they can do with this format. It's, yeah. It's endless. Another thing worth noting about the, like the GPL in general is that none of the players have actually said anything negative about playing or participating and everyone has fun with it. And I, that's super important for the league and I think it's, it says a lot about the way we've been treated and just uh, like how it's like the excitement of it in general. I think it's a big deal that everyone just loves it and has enjoyed their, their time playing, you know? Yeah, and I think the fun, in general, my entire philosophy has always been that the fun translates from the screen to the viewer at home. And so we're having fun, they're having fun, and hopefully eventually everybody else <laughs> comes along for the ride. I agree. I tell that to broadcasters all the time when they ask me like how to grow a stream. I always say the most important thing is make sure whatever you're streaming, you're actually in a good mood and having fun when you're doing it because it shows. Brandon's going to get a few more chips here. What's with the tank, Randy? He's raising. Wow. Do you just put Martin all in? No? Not quite. It's 10,000 to call. It's about half of Martin's okay. remaining stack. And Randy sees a spot for a thin value raise and just takes it. It's actually a great spot because Randy could potentially do this with like so many missed draws. Good fold by Martin. Nice block. I wasn't bluffing. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wasn't bluffing here. Yeah, would you have like a random eight? No, better. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great doing a broadcast with Eric Danis too because when people usually I'm the one people complain about my voice but yours <laughs> is just takes all of the heat it's fantastic yeah, I, I never sound hung over because I'm with a guy that sounds like he's literally never stopped drinking for the last yeah. 10 years <laughs> yeah, little did you know I rarely drink and have never smoked so sorry folks yeah. mom and dad yeah, yeah, yeah. all their fault you played 41 <laughs> hands right last game yeah okay. I would like to uh, beat that record blinds 8 1600 now Martin hovering right around 12 big blinds. Chip Treak, chi, chi, here we go, one more time. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to broadcasting school one of these days. Cheap Trick Record, that is a bit of a tongue twister, asks, what does the term split mean that is on the upper left sometimes next to the hand graphic? That is the percentage of the time that they will chop the pot if they get to showdown. Are you sure? Right there, that's how few chips Martin Yaxman has last left. 13 big blinds. And Martin, maybe getting a little desperate here, raising the 5-3. I mean, he doesn't have much choice. <laughs> I love people's like random remedies for cures for things. What? <laughs> Jonathan Little's voice is so squeaky. You should drink some olive oil. <laughs> hey man, so that's what the, that's squeak, your teammate the squeaky voice gets the oil. That's right. Uh, Jakobsen has uh, not flopped best here. He has flopped the second best hand. He's got a pair, which may be dangerous for him. Randy's betting 3,800. The good news is Jonathan Little can afford olive oil. Yes. He can he, even get extra virgin if he wants. He, he's uh, he he's doing do fine. Martin wondering what to do. Calling with bottom pair. Eight of hearts on the turn. Martin John. with less than a pot size bet left behind. John Little in the cube on Sunday. Do we know what team he plays against yet? We do. He's playing George Danzer of the Paris Aviators on Sunday. Maybe I should talk like this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the hype is too real. Probably the worst time I can have there. Yeah. Randy puts Martin all in. Martin folds. Martin down to 13K. Fewer than 10 big blinds. He is all in with Queen Jack. I'm going to wait long enough. Okay, I'm not going to fold right away. Queen Jack doesn't <laughs> win all ins, I heard. Actually, no. I actually busted my six max with Queen Jack, too. So sick. Queen, Queen Jack is amongst the worst hand to go broke with. When you're like, it's, even when you have live cards and it just comes out eight high, and you're like, why? <laughs> you know, uh, it doesn't show your cards, so I can technically just go on right now. You could, yeah. And be like, Oh. Yeah, if you want to try that strategy, you want to try be it? my guess. Hold on, I'm, I'm sliding. Just I, sli let me know. I slid it, but I'm going to take a look. P can you peek at one? 
Looks like Randy no. is setting his betting amounts before he looks at his cards. Wishful thinking. Uh, they have next one of these seasons, they just have one where you only see one card the whole tournament. <laughs> <laughs> that should be kind of interesting. They need to speed it up, though. It's too, too long in between us. Mm -hmm. Queen nine against Jack five. Randy got caught, correct? Sound effect. Gotti on Twitch did not like Randy's fold <laughs> when uh, Martin jammed the queen jack and Randy folded 7 8. I mean. What do you think? I think that Gotti should probably just play high stakes poker for Yeah, why don't you just jump in our game? Yeah. <laughs> How do you short stack? Getting there. <laughs> You're a pro at this. My turn. Wait, what are you going to do, though? Uh, <laughs> I haven't looked yet. You're not allowed to ask you that. Did, you, you did look into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, not excited about it. So, An Andy. Randy. Randy! Working, working Martin Jacobson. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like everything here at the <laughs> Let's see what Martin does here with Jack 8. He moves all in. I think Randy's going to have to call it off here with Ace-7 of Diamonds. It's a quick call. So. I'm gonna re-raise it. I'm gonna try to re-raise all in still. <laughs> that good, eh? Randy's good all luck. in for 82,000. King oh, high flop eight. eight though on <laughs> that board. Pot. Wow. Randy yeah. not a ton of outs here. Seven is <laughs> not go. good enough. Uh, Martin uh, Jacobson yeah, doubles up. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and these two are gonna be nearly even 34. now. I think it's gonna be about 34,000 for Martin. Doing the comeback thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow, we're over 38 hands. Yeah, we got about well, three hands to go. That's the thing about turn out tournaments and sit and goes and just heads up stuff in general. Like, eventually you just kind of have to run okay. Like, when the blinds get big and you just don't have all the chips, you just kind of have to run okay. Run okay. You have to run not bad. Yeah, and even when you have all the chips, like, you can lose them all so fast. <laughs> pretty interesting here that we've got uh, a pretty good pair for Martin and a flush draw for Randy. Randy gets a chance to free card here. Randy just puts them all in. Why, why did I think I was the button here? <laughs> <laughs> not the button. <laughs> I guess I gotta call it off. <laughs> she totally, totally changed the hand. Huh? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. God, you're you're you're, you're <laughs> so, lead on the so, on, on the flop. So what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? What happened? Oh, it was a lead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but what happened pre-flop? I I raised pre-flop. And I just called. Yeah, and then you just bet out on the flop. Oh, okay. Well, it's very likely <laughs> no, no, no. to uh, okay. escalate nice. here. <laughs> I was like, no, Noko has a dance for this. <laughs> if he doesn't do the Ace King dance in the cube after he wins a hand, it's gonna be disappointing. Good luck to my favorite hand. Randy That's Lou, all hand. in yeah, and That's ahead. Domination favorite. Nation. <laughs> and Ace Ooh, King does hold. So Randy doubles up now. Martin right back where he started. Whoa. That was music that may have indicated that the match was over, but it is not over. <laughs> Uh, well, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably won't be over after this. If things happen the way they're supposed to, mathematically, statistically, and game-wise, Martin is looking at another double up here. There's 
Martin's raise. There's Nananoka's all in. There's Martin's call. <laughs> Domination Nation this time in favor of Sweden. 6-5-6. Six, six. Got some shot opportunities now. 4-5-6-7 for Randy. Ooh. Click. Oh, Ace yeah. on the river. I think you had 40,000 or something? 100. No, 100. 100. <laughs> Martin doubles oh, I up. I got 76. Uh, I don't know. You ready? All in. <laughs> this time the all in isn't called. <laughs> oh no. No action on I'm Kings good. for Martin. Thought you were sliding all your ships in, that's your card. Lines 12 and 2400. Oh, that'll be cool, right? They make you have to slide your chips in. <laughs> It'd be like a <laughs> like they have colors too. Beer, yeah. So it looks like we're mostly playing a pre-flop game now. 15k for Randy. He's got an ace. He is all in. Just six high for Martin. Eh. Who folds? I don't understand how someone could over 100 hands. That's so sick. Yeah. All right, let's take a peek one at a time. Oh, Jakobsen shoves with 8-7, puts Randy all in. He's got a suited queen. We may see a call here. He might end up folding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy does not have very many big blinds. Wish I knew how to do these maps. It's pretty anti-fold. <laughs> I can't match. do it. What's 2,400 into 16K? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's More virtually like impossible. You need like a graphing calculator. <laughs> He doesn't have many big blinds. He's actually supposed to call. <sighs> I should ask you for advice. You want to come over and look? Sure. <laughs> get no, up, get yeah, up, get I away. can't cross this line. <laughs> get up, get out of here. <laughs> Just I mean, he can. Yeah. You know? All right. <laughs> I saw Scott yeah, Ball offering that option yesterday. Can't for some reason, Scott did it before call. we had the lasers <laughs> activated, though. Because now if you do it, you get sliced in half. Yeah, we want to avoid getting players sliced in half. But if they cross that line, there needs to be some they form of punishment. Know something. So obviously, slice in half was the most logical option. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, otherwise, it's not a deterrent. Is he in the flop? No. Borderline. This time, it's Randy's turn to shove. I mean, Martin folds. We wanted to sportify poker, so we might as well make it extreme, too, Death right? Deathify poker. <laughs> yeah. That's what I need to know. Not it's borderline. We Martin. had to make poker more aggressive oh. than MMA and boxing. I mean, hey, we got to tap into those markets. Absolutely. All right, we're very likely to see it all in here. And Martin is going to be ahead. Borderline. The yeah. slight favorite. Okay, I borderline call. call. Nice. That's not borderline call. Jack on the flop. <laughs> nine for Nanonoko. Not <laughs> trying to but not. Oh, queen on the turn. Ten. Two. Ah. And queen nine. <laughs> manages to run down <laughs> King <laughs> Jack. When you said borderline, that's kind of bad for my hand because you have like. So this match will not end. <laughs> Or something, yeah. They wanted to beat the 41 hands. <laughs> and they did it. All right, welcome back. All right. Yeah. Actually, I think all my matches of you are like pretty long. <laughs> 49 hands, sorry. Yeah, I haven't played these long matches either. Yeah, the trick is to try to win fast. Well, I guess we're equally good. <laughs> you sweat less. <laughs> <laughs> right. Save your legs. I need to win this one to be equally good. Yeah. Randy's five is going to be good here at Showdown. Yeah, six, seven. <laughs> Borderline. <laughs> Borderline. Almost back to even. Very close. Huh? Close enough for government work. It's Martin who's got the slight lead, though, so when it goes all in, if he wins, it's over. Uh-oh. This could be real trouble for Randy. Randy bets 2,800. Martin obviously not folding. Not sure if Randy can ever get away from this. What do you think, Scott? 
<laughs> um, With the way the hand's playing, it's going to be tough. Like, Heads Up is just one of those games where the pair is like just so so good, you know? Yeah, it's Randy's not, like not slowing down, even though he got called on that flop. Well, this turn bet's actually good, because now he can slow down on the river. If he, like, he could check back river, and Martin's probably just going to call and then check river and hope, hope uh, Randy blasts. I do definitely like the call. Wow, oh, Martin's smiling again. Uh, yeah, and Randy has checked, uh, as Scott win. predicted. Martin checks behind, announces I win, and he does win. Chop at best, I think, for me. Yeah, very west. So even though Randy's got 30K, it's still right around 20 big blinds. Sorry, 10 big blinds. The the big blind is 2,800 now. Excuse me, 10 big yeah. blinds. Martin puts them all in. It's funny, every time you do this, I have like the same hand. <laughs> you really do, it's like four times or so. Yeah, I'm pretty good friends with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> the tech guys. I'm pretty good friends with Alex, too. You know what it means? It yeah, means that he thinks that you owe him more favors. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that was actually not beneficial. Well, I thought it wasn't beneficial for me, but it turned out it saved me. Because <laughs> I had a flush, and Anton had, like, the nut flush or something. All right. That's weird. <laughs> Very weird, huh? Pair versus pair. On the, river, on the sixth street. So. That was weird <laughs> when he looked right at the camera for a race, second, but, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, it was. Calling instead, but. Randy's bet 10% of his stack here <laughs> on the flop. That's a min bet for him. Randy with two pair now and the flush draw. Top pair for Jakobsen. It looks like we're going to have another short stack double up. <laughs> Find the all-in button, Randy. I'm starting to figure out when the players are going to be quiet. It's whenever they have a hand. It's actually like of some strength. Right, yeah. <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> That's you're supposed to talk more, man. That's a fake Discipline. Tells. Discipline, Paul. Discipline? Yeah. Something random. It's a big blind, 3,200. <laughs> 3, How do I do this? There's actually not been near as much like creative play as I would have um, anticipated in this match, to be honest with you. It's actually been like pretty straightforward. A lot of just, you know, betting when I have it. We've seen that happen quite a bit, actually. I wonder if it's because the players are just getting used to the cube and getting mm -hmm. used to the, the setup. Obviously, you from a gaming background and a competition <laughs> background, you shape. use a lot of stuff to your advantage, but uh, a bit different with some of the players. I mean, the secret is, man, you got to blast, you know. Turn for you, actually. Oh, God. <laughs> nice hand. Oh. That's it, right? Yeah, 100. Good game. Martin there. gets there. <laughs> That's pretty. How many hands with? Uh, I don't know. 54, 54 hands this time. Pretty <clears throat> good, man. Yeah. That's all good. And there you have it, folks. We had uh, an emergency. Joe Stapleton at Tinder super like had to go i mean when that tinder emergency calls you're you're rolling you know what i mean it's just, just it is what it is and as we've seen in chat uh scott the people are just demanding my voice more 
I'll get to hear it for match th game three, which is up in the next few minutes. Joe had a little emergency, had to leave. We'll be back with us tomorrow morning. Don't worry, folks. Joe will be back in the booth tomorrow. We'll see him then. Scott, you were just mentioning that you found that there was just um, maybe not any, not much creativity here. And I mentioned that we've seen that a lot. Do you think that it's the players getting familiar, to, familiar familiarizing themselves with the cube? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's like a different format that's very uncomfortable for most players. Um, I think some people will like, you know, just really thrive in that, and some people will take a lot of adapting to. Um, I also think it's one of those spots where I don't know if like neither one of these guys should be too worried too much about like just three points because right. both the teams are doing so well. Um, I also think they also said they have never played together before, right. so that could have something to do with it. Um, I mean, but sometimes you just got to blast, man. I agree, I, I agree. I with Chris very little, and sometimes you just got to just, just put all the chips in the middle and see what happens. Do you think that the fact that you were playing someone of a legend when it comes to online poker, Chris Mormon, you actually had to even step that game up? Um, and, and that's I, not to say anything bad yeah. about you, of course. No, no, it's just no. Like, you know. I, I don't think so. I kind of play everyone. Like, I, I just yep. kind of have a game plan and follow my game plan. Um, I think that when you adjust it too much, even if it's like not being creative when, you're, when you are creative in certain spots, I think that's when people start to make like, you know, a lot of mistakes. It's yeah. When you have a game plan, it's good to follow. You obviously, you have to adjust, but it's little adjustments that you have to make, not massive ones. That's great. We'll be uh, with the, the gentlemen soon. Actually, we're ready for them now. There's Laura Cornelius with Martin Jakobsen and Nana Noko. Martin Jakobsen, congratulations. Another 3.6 points now for the Montreal Nationals. How did you find that match? Uh, it was uh, a bit longer than the, the first one. Uh, both matches have been really long, so. So, a bit back and forth, like I was Real short. swinging, yeah, yeah. I was really short uh, early on and then came back and then uh, no, it was really short and then we were even and then, yeah, we just got it in on a flip, basically. Ah, I thought you were going to do it again. <laughs> uh, I know why he won the main event now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now the guys were saying uh, not much creativity. What, what is your response to that? Well, they get in there. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you get in yeah, there, guys. We're here to play our best poker and, you know, sometimes creative, sometimes it isn't. Are we going to see something crazy in this last and final match? Montreal just, have already won it. I just want to win the match. So. You can't win it now. He's yeah. won two well, games. I just want to win a game. You know, just somewhere. one game. So I don't, I don't get shunned out of the, the team someday. <laughs> yeah, what will Selena say if this is a clean she's, sweep? She's probably uh, pretty disappointed already, but, you know. Oh, no, no I am feeling bad. Yeah, feel bad. <laughs> Give me the boom oh, switch. Oh, <laughs> Luckily, we don't have a, a broom here, I don't think. So, I know. Uh, it's, no it's more. Good. We're doing just fine. Uh. Okay, right. <laughs> These guys are ready for game three. Will it be a clean sweep for the Montreal Nationals or will the Hong Kong Stars take one game back? We will be going to the desk very shortly after this small commercial. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more. EPT 13 uh, kicking off in August. Uh, Scott, you were at the PCA just a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, nice cash there at the PCA at one point. Uh, tell us about your experience down there. I love PCA, man. Like, first of all, any event that Stars puts on, yeah. 
their staff and floors and dealers that are all flowing and they're all so unbelievably good at their jobs um, and very, very well organized. There's very few mistakes made and everything's so fast. Um, PCA is also a fun event for me because it's, when you come to something like the World Series, it's, it's nice. It's obviously great for poker to play with more right. recreational players and stuff like that. Um, but the attitude at a table, at, at like a series event, yeah. is, is very, very stern and serious. Um, when you're playing at PCA, when everyone is going there that's in the PCA to play poker specifically and like have a few days of fun, it's a very like relaxed atmosphere, fun. You'll see people buying people drinks at the table, and I've definitely partaken a bit of that, and it's, it's a really fun event. It's a little hard to have fun in Las Vegas when it's 160 degrees every day. Uh, Scott, we met, we talked yesterday about um, player winning two matches, the pressure on the on the opponent to win one. We mentioned there's a big difference by losing six to three than winning than losing nine to zero. That's a six point swing there. Um, don't you feel that Nanonoko now feeling the pressure not only to represent the team but just trying to scrape out three points in this match? Yeah, for sure. I think it's just important that Nanonoko remembers that his team is still doing very well no matter what, and it's like he's done put up great results for his team as is. They should just relax and know that it's, it's it, like everything's okay and like it's just one more match and each match is a time and it, it is what it is. It's a heads up sit and go with fairly fast structure, especially as it gets deep and it, it you know there's variance in poker and sometimes you're going to lose and that's okay and I think if you just approach it with a very very calm mindset and doesn't get nervous I think there's a good chance Randy can come back with three points for his team. Yeah the money the, sorry the Montreal Nationals now at 112 points that's an 11 point lead on the sunset so after this heat they will have at least 11 or they will have an 11 point lead on the on the next team in their division they're doing very well they're very close to actually clinching a playoff spot this early in the season it's been a great year for Montreal and I know you felt the brunt of uh, Jason Lavallee but that's a very fine team, is it not? Yeah, I mean, the Nationals have so many good players, and they're crushing. Like, they're, yeah. they're playing great. Um, Mark andre is also a great player himself, obviously. He did a fantastic job um, drafting his team, and he has just a bunch of bosses. Um, especially, like, he also did a good job with getting a bunch of bosses that, like, a lot of people in poker might not necessarily know very well. Right. Like, someone like uh, Jason, I mean... Uh, Jason streamed a very little bit on Twitch. He mm -hmm. streamed a little more. Um, and if you played, if you frequented the high stakes mixed games on Stars or watched them, you'd see him a lot. Um, but like a lot of people in poker have no idea how good that kid actually yeah. is. So Mark Andre did a fantastic job. Yeah, for sure. And here we go, game three. We'll see if the Jakobsen can, uh, the sweep is on. We'll see if he can sweep Nanonoko. Let's hope not. We love our Nanonoko here at Twitch. You want a 77. All right. Yours lower, right? Well, mine's only 49. It, uh, it knows I'm losing. I'll drag out the match. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stall. Can you know someone's got 5%? Yeah. <laughs> Turn up their brightness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Scott, we could be done here in the first hand. Nanonoko holding eights. Ace jack of spades for Jakobsen. What's the fewest hands played in a heads-up match? Do you know by a chance? One. One? Someone that's got in the first right. hand? Yes. George Danzer v. Uh, <laughs> Igor Kirkinov. Igor holding aces and losing to Danzer in the very first hand. So what did Danzer have? I forget at this point. Okay, no, that's yeah, okay. We'll, that's okay. We'll review that. But yes, uh, by the turn, I believe that uh, Igor was drawing dead, and that's when the money went in. So, so sick. It's never bad to be one up on Igor Kirkinov on the very first hand. No, Igor Kurinov is pretty sick. Yeah. Obviously, so is George Danzer. Yes. Both those guys are also like just two like such relaxed, friendly, nice individuals to be around. Like those are two guys that like I just I, I've never even remotely had a slightly uh, not pleasant experience with. Yeah, Joe and I bring this up quite a bit about um, the good-looking, successful, amazing players that are also nice. That's very frustrating to guys like me and Joe. So, yes, I agree. <laughs> Uh, we had Dmitry Urbanovich here the other day, just the nicest fella you can ever meet. So really fun that these players actually take time for their fans as well. The WSOP, as you know, is a place to meet the fans. The Bay 101, where Nananoko had a deep run this year. Uh, if you've never been to the Bay 101, just an insane poker tournament where hundreds and hundreds of people are there for day 1A action. So it's fun to be there as well. Yeah, it makes it fun. And like, it's important that people realize how much energy that these guys actually put into meeting their fans and talking talking to talking to people especially at, at something like the WSOP when they're playing like when you have a 20 minute break i i, I was uh i watched maria ho the other day like literally stand up in the closet walk five feet away and take pictures for an yeah. entire 20 minute break mm -hmm. sure. and love every second of it and appreciate her fans and it's just so neat to see someone just 
uh, like being tired because they're grinding this Colossus turn, which is a tough tournament to grind. It's Absolutely. brutal. And then just using their entire break just to meet people. It just really shows how much they really care. Yeah, no, I very much agree with that. By the way, speaking of hard workers, we have a, a bunch of hardworking people here in uh, in Las Vegas with our team, but also our team in Malta. We're talking Max, Beto, Carlos, uh, Roland, all doing great jobs. They're actually still up working at the moment. Of course, it's still sort of early in, uh, in Malta, but they've been at the office for over 12 hours now just working on this show. So thanks to the guys down there. Enjoy a cold mm -hmm. chisk on me. Oh, I raised. Pretty sure I raised. Just tuning in, Joe Stapleton just had to leave a little early today. Just a little uh, situation he needed to take care of. He'll be right back in the booth tomorrow morning. Don't worry about it, folks. This Stakes is actually this is actually gonna be an interesting spot because I think Randy's gonna bet. Um, oh, Randy checked. That's so sick. That's good. But Jakobsen has to check back there because he just has so much showdown value. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're gonna stop. I don't think you call <laughs> too big of a bet. Who wants it more? Oh, I think Nanonoko <laughs> wants it more here. Who Absolutely. Wants it more? Who's going to win with Jack 5? Scott, you were in this position yesterday, leading to nothing. It's easy to say that your game doesn't change, but do you think that you know, somewhere in there you're comfortable, you're happy with winning that match automatically? Do you think Not Jakobsen really. can maybe, you know, play a little looser in this match since there's only six uh, points secured really. for the team? You really don't. Or like set for the playoffs. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Your attitude definitely changes when you're up 2-0 uh, a bit, especially if you know your opponent's a bit frustrated and tilted. Yeah. You can have a little even more fun with them, right? Um, I, lucky. I wasn't even going to show up for a day. Yeah. <laughs> you can really just sit out all I the told, games? Yeah. <laughs> I told Mark, I was like, but really, you have to go? I will say that uh, I, having... I know Randy very well, and he doesn't have tilt issues very well. When you play like 25 tables at once, you just can't have tilt issues with this, because the swings are so big. I have tilt issues one tabling. I assume that's why <laughs> sure. I'm here. You and saw, he's there. You saw what I did there. <laughs> just gonna Not bet. really connected with that board. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to jack four, maybe. Just go all in on the turn. I know you can't call. No, pretty, jack four is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and just like mis just like try to like make the other point. I'm missing like, angle. I got it back yeah. though. I, yeah. I, There's so many angles I, I, in this. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> now I know you can slide uh, slide yeah, one card. It's gonna get pretty creative by the mm. end of this series. How's that for creativity? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you've been waiting like the whole day <laughs> just to do like one move. So I gave you your cards back, right? Is that what happened? You gave me. Did like, you actually fold when you did that, or no? Uh, like I fold. I started slide, slide, I slided one card off, oh, and then he said check button. I was like, I pressed check, and then I got the card back. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that's an option. Someone on Twitter asking if Jakobsen's shirt is rolled up. By itself, or if he did that to show his muscles, I will try to get that insider information after today's match. So when does this giveaway end, Eric? It is weekly, actually. Every week there'll oh, be a wow. giveaway. And uh, thanks for thanks for reminding me, uh, Scott. If you uh, are enjoying this coverage, uh, you can now clip 30 seconds of the of the action, your favorite time, maybe when Scott Ball was destroying Chris Mormon's brain. Oh, wow. 
at some point yesterday. You can share that on Twitter and Facebook uh, using the hashtag GPL something. I'll try to find out. Giveaway. I'll try to find out. That might not be the hashtag. Let me try to find it in a second. But uh, the good news is you can tweet your favorite moments and every week we will uh, choose the winners and send them a official jersey of their favorite team in the GPL. It is actually hashtag GPL giveaway. Thank you, Luis. Fuck it for you, seven didn't peel off. I don't think I've lost that much. That <laughs> it happened. was uh, every time. <laughs> Why did it show our cards? You see that? Huh? Did it, it? it showed the. Uh, I saw your hand threes or something. Oh really? You had threes? Yeah. No, I actually showed it. Oh really? I don't. That was weird, right? Yeah. Did you Did you fold or no? I fold. Oh, I I did. The, I swiped to to make it quicker for the next hand. Oh, did you actually fold the next hand? Maybe. There's no way you fold threes. No, you gave me a walk, right? Oh, is that Just, what happened? Yeah, didn't you? No, I really, no, I really did see your cards, like on the. Oh, on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, huh. But I was like, did I call? <laughs> no, no, I think you gave me a walk. I was sliding my my screen got green. Maybe was, that's how you show your card. No? Yeah. But did you, you didn't? Oh, you didn't look the screen when that happened for me. I guess that was weird. We'll yeah. have to ask him later. Yeah, the yeah, boys are correct. That's what just happened here. Martin actually showing his hand after winning it in order to speed up the play. I'm pretty sure, pretty confident you haven't seen him so far. <laughs> You've got like two pair. I'm, I'm going to make this guy fold. <laughs> That's another interesting element. Like when he says, like, I'm pretty sure you haven't seen many of my hands so far. Like, it's actually funny because you know, he's implying that essentially, like, maybe I've been bluffing you a bunch and really there yeah, hasn't no been much of that, right? Because you have no clue. So there's, there's a lot of head games that can be played in this environment. Alright, you got it. You got it, calls. <laughs> Jakobsen improving here on the turn. Love the you small bet it. here. You got it. He, he's putting on Randy, Randy on exactly what he has and trying to get a call. Out of Ace or King High. I called, yeah. I folded. Yeah. Didn't see your cards that time. Martin extends his lead here with that last pot. You notice that both of these players are also acting quite quite quickly, actually. I think it has a lot to do with the with not as much shatter, and the fact that I, I think I think I definitely acted even quicker in game three than I was acting in the other games. But I always act pretty quickly. I think when you're up a few games, it's easy to you know, just, uh, okay, I call. Like, what do you have, man? Like, right. <laughs> said you had a queen jack, did you see? What? <laughs> <laughs> Mind games from Ananoko. Oh, it snapped you off.
Well, Liquidation, I would imagine if you win a giveaway, they would probably want your address to send you the winning item. So, one would think if you want to win the jersey and actually get it, you would probably need to provide your shipping address, sir. Good goal, Scott Ball. Boy, it just looks like Martin Jakobsen is not going to lose this game, Scott. Here he is. No, he's been on the uh, turn. Sometimes you run good, man. But to be fair, like when a great player like Martin runs good, they're just unstoppable. That's like right. when, when, when you're as good as either of these guys and you run well, you're just going to win. Like it, it, I call. Oh my god. This could be it. <laughs> good game, man. That's it. Yep, good game. Yeah. Nice sweep. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. and that is it. Oh, I knew you were up to no good on that last one. I was like, oh, just call. Oh. Well, I can't blame you for calling. Oh, we really are locked in there. I think so. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start breaking shit. <laughs> Good playing with you, man. Yeah. Was... And there you have it, Scott. A clean sweep by the Montreal Nationals. Not the best of news for the moneymakers and the other teams in the America's Conference, but the team is just on fire, and it does not look like it's, it's going to stop anytime soon. No, I mean, they're a great team. They have a lot of great players, and Martin just came in here today and got the job done. Um, it's very impressive. It's Randy Liu is a very good poker player, um, and, I mean, just 3 0 at someone, that's, that's a big deal. That's, that's not an easy thing to do to anyone at this caliber at all. Do you, do you agree that I, we actually talked about this earlier, but both players pretty much played ABC poker. I don't think that Randy played you know, bad at all. Uh, would you agree with that? I think he had a solid match. You mentioned the fact that Martin, you know, when you're a good player and you run good, it's almost an unstoppable uh, force. Yeah, I mean, both people played pretty standard. They both played very well. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, in heads up, sit and goes, they're like, it, it's, like I can tell you if they played 10 times, there's, it would be very hard for anyone in this league to 10 0 someone, right? right? 3 0 is extremely difficult, too, and that's a of huge course. accomplishment when you make it happen. Um, it, it's one of those spots, though, where it's like it sets up, sit, and goes, essentially, and like there, there is, you are going to lose some. And it's just important when you're someone like Randy at this spot to like realize, you know, it's going to happen sometimes. I got 3 0, like whatever, it's, I'm over it. Time, t time to just, you know, m review a little bit, be very honest about it, and then, and then move forward. We, we mentioned the fact, and now this is now the fourth straight win for the Americas Conference in cross-conference play. You'll know that if you're a fan of the league that you usually play against your own conference, but here in the Summer Series, it's one match against every other team in the other conference. 4-0 so far, Scott. We were hoping there'd be a rivalry between the two conferences, but right now there's no rivalry. It's pretty set in stone who the better conference is. Yeah, I mean, America players, best players, that's all. <laughs> now, th th that being said, of course, Martin Jakobsen is a Swede and plays for a team in the Americas Conference. Nope, nope, so nope, he's American now. That's okay? right. We're going to claim him, too. He's got that Canadian passport <laughs> now. As does Scott Ball, who was wearing the beautiful Canadian jersey or Canadian garb, his first match against uh, Jason Lavalle. Well, speaking of our two players, let's uh, see what Laura has to say with Martin Jakobsen, the winner, and unfortunately an 0-3 Nananoko. Back to you, Laura. Thanks, Eric. The clean sweep, nine points for the Montreal Nationals. As we said before, just the rich getting richer. And the, well, you're not poor. You were kind of mid-conference, so. Uh, poor now, poor now. Yeah, you're kind of sinking down there. <laughs> How did you find that? Oh, that was very quick, that last one. It was, yeah. Yeah, well, no, it was nice. Uh, any key hands over the last three games that you wish to discuss? Um, I don't know. Can you think of one? Um. I mean, I wish I won the last hand, yeah, but that's it's hard. hard. It's hard it's to pretty remember standard. right now. Yeah. It's like your brain is frying. It was quite hot in there. Yeah, yeah and everyone <laughs> keeps talking about the heat and, and standing up as well. Like, yeah, it's actually it's an endurance test, so I'm actually getting kind of tired just standing there the whole time. One of the guys on Twitch said after every level they should put in a snake. What do you think of that? Yeah, I know you guys, <laughs> get, you guys are going to get creative. I already know it. <laughs> it's going to be some fun stuff coming up. But talking about standing up, do you think you can notice more towels from the other player? Um... Maybe, Did you yeah. It's Did you a bit, pick up on anything? I think if it's, you really tried, there is a lot to, to be gained. I didn't really try it's, it that It's hard. a bit awkward because you don't yeah. really know where to have your hands. There's just this little, little uh, iPad in front of you. And, like, <laughs> I don't know. I just found it awkward. Because you know can't where. play with chips, yeah. Yeah, you, usually, like, you have, you're, uh, I have a standing desk at home, so I'm used to standing. But I have, like, a big desk, so, I, you know, it's different. And you have a mouse and stuff. So the setup is just totally different from what we used to. So. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, like it's it? It's possible that it, it's like it feels a bit awkward because you're like 
quite naked up there because like there's nothing covering. Yeah, there's your... no chairs. Yeah, there's there's no nothing covering. Co yeah, that could be another idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you enjoyed it anyway. Maybe yeah, you'll no, get you, you'll get used to it. Yeah, the I more think games everyone everyone needs to get comfortable or get used to uh, this format, and then it will be it will be more entertaining. Okay, we'll not tell Selena about this one. Hopefully, oh, she's gonna know. <laughs> the time difference might, you know, alter things, and uh, she might yeah. get over it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, he played well. He played well. Yeah, you're gonna be back though, and you're gonna score some more points for the Hong Kong. Stars. Yeah, if I, if I'll be back, and if I get three out again, uh, I won't come back. <laughs> no, we want you. But uh, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, you know, we just gotta play uh, play our poker. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. But as long as uh, we're growing the game and having fun. I think that's that's the most important to me. Well, thank you so much for joining us and uh, letting us see you in action in the cube today. We will head back to the desk now and take a look at some of the standings. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you to both of our players. Great competitors. Nanonoko, a star in this league, a fourth top scorer heading into this match. Martin Yakinson will now move into the top five. So really, both players have been playing so well to start the year, Scott. That being said, it's time to have a look at uh, the standings where we keep on talking or refer referring, referring as the Montreal Nationals as the top team. So let's take a look. They are, boy, they are dominating. 14-point lead now in the LA Sunset. It is just on for this team at 30 a 40 point lead there's my math going 40 point lead on the last the, on the playoff spot uh, on the San Francisco rush so it does look like Montreal will clinch a playoff spot within the summer series if all goes well the sunset the rounders and the Mets are the other teams in the playoffs the rush who had their match earlier this week a good win by Jonathan Jaffe which was necessary because my uh, my co my co-host right now Scott Ball also picked up six points for the Las Vegas moneymakers Scott let me ask you is the team at the moment it does look like first place will should not be attainable just for now so is the focus trying to get into a playoff spot as early as possible and try to stay there for the rest of the year uh, <laughs> absolutely like uh, I mean being the twitch guy yeah. like not being able to play a twitch con would be <laughs> pretty gross it would be I think the amount of needles I would get for like the, the rest of my life from my coworkers would be bad so we want it well, Jonathan Little gets in the cube on Sunday, so hopefully more points for the Las Vegas uh, moneymakers then. Let's take a quick look at the Eurasia Conference standings. Unfortunately for Nan and and the Stars, it remains exactly the same. So the London Royals with 100 points there at the top, 95 points for the Wolverines. The Stars, who had a chance at matching London's 100-point total today, that didn't happen. Uh, Paris is the team that's probably the happiest at this moment because the three teams on top of them also only picked up three points, so that's, a, that's good news for them. And now the doors open for Berlin and Rome to pick up some points on the teams in front of them. So that'll be interesting to see what happens then. We mentioned Berlin. Well, that's a part of our match tomorrow. The return of Jeff Gross, who is one of the top scoring players in the league, especially in points percentage. There he is on screen. Jeff Gross enters the cube tomorrow. Facing Felipe Mojave Ramos, he is really bringing the Brazilians tomorrow. It should be loud in here. We wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the cube shake at some point during the match. If you've uh, witnessed a uh, Brazilian final table at the World Series, those people know how to rock the, uh, the Amazon room. Speaking of the Amazon room, Best of luck to two of our four players, two, two players in the GPL, Olivier Bousquet of the New York, sorry, the LA Sunset, and Paris Aviator Alexandre Luneau. They're both right now, once our coverage is done, head on over to WSOP.com as they are battling in the final four of the Heads Up contest. No surprise there that two of the top Heads Up players in the world, especially Bousquet, who's known for their Heads Up specialties. If they both win their matches, Scott, it'll be Bousquet versus Luneau in the final. That will be interesting. Olivier Bousquet, you've seen him play in the league. You've, you've known him before. Talk to me about how an amazing heads-up player he is. I mean, I had always heard he was an amazing heads-up sit-and-go player. Um, and, I, and I believed it because I heard it from everyone. And seeing him, he's like just absolutely been crushing everyone in the GPL. He is so sick. And the 10K heads-up race is an interesting one mm -hmm. because it's like really not a high-value tournament. Right. The prize pool is very small for it. Not very small, but it's a 10K by, I think, first place, like 300-something thousand. Yes. In comparison, to most 10Ks, prize pools are just first place is massive. Yeah. It's like kind of like a pride bracelet. Like, if you win the 10K heads-up bracelet, that's like a big deal. That's like a, that's a huge pat on the back and a little boost to the ego for sure. Um, and 
I mean, Olivier, he deserves it. Like, I mean, it's hard to say anyone deserves anything in poker, right. but the guy is like just such a crusher. And but Leno is also so good, yeah. and I'm sure whoever else they're playing is also. <laughs> There's no slouches in that tournament, you know. Yeah, it's pretty sick that Leno would probably list he- you know heads up, or especially no limit, as probably his sixth best game, and here he is semi-finalist uh, right now at the World Series. So not no shocker that man can play some poker. And all the best heads-up sit-and-go players, all the best heads-up players played that. I mean, you had everyone. Like, right. just everyone was there. So it's just, it's just such a sick tournament to win if you take it down. So you can leave us soon and then go to WSOP.com and hopefully a member of the GPL will uh, be crowned champion and maybe be in the cube in the next few days. We've already mentioned uh, the fact that uh, we have our match tomorrow. Quickly, Saturday, we'll wrap up Heat 1 play as Timothy Adams of the Rome Emperors plays Kevin McPhee of the New York Rounders, the only player in the GPL, Scott, to not score a point. That's right. Six points to Aaron Paul and zero points to Kevin McPhee. That's just bizarre and uh, probably should not happen. But I have a feeling Mr. McPhee has a lot in store for us. So uh, another uh, no, superb online player and live player. He's just accustomed to both. I don't think the cube will be uh, anything to scare him. So we'll have to see uh, what happens on Saturday. But of course, join us tomorrow first. The Bears and the Mets. I can't wait for, for that one. Scott, uh, of course, thank you for being here today. You were great to be here just a few hours after winning your match and after playing at the WSOP. So thank you for uh, getting up early for us today. Thanks for having me. It's a ton of fun. I really appreciate all the work you guys do. And we thank you for watching. We'll have Scott back in the booth uh, sometime this summer for sure. For Scott Ball and for Joe Stapleton. Note, still not there. Still on the Tinder date. He'll be back tomorrow morning. I'm Eric Danis. We will see you tomorrow. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more.